Uh, here we go. It's mind pop time. All right. Uh, today we're giving away free access to Maps Prime. Here's what you got to do to win this free program. And it's a great program. It's great for priming your body and correcting muscle imbalances and giving you better movement so you can build more muscle and burn more body fat. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. So leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. You got to do all of those things. Now, if we pick your comment, you'll get access to Maps Prime for free. How cool is that? Isn't that awesome? Now, we know you're going to love this episode, so keep listening. By the way, uh, one more thing. We are running a huge promotion right now. Maps Aesthetic is 50% off, and our Extreme Fitness Bundle is also 50% off. So they're both half off. Go check them out. Go sign up. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code MAYSPECIAL with no space for the discount. All right. Get ready to learn some stuff. Enjoy this episode. I love doing this um, right now. Like, I, what do we, uh, Doug, do you know what, off the top of your head, how many partners we have? We have like 20, 20, 20 something. Somewhere 15 around. to 20. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere. around there, right? Mm -hmm. And can't you know, count your partners. Yeah, no. <laughs> bad sign. Yeah. <laughs> how many partners have you been with? We always, guys, 15 got, to 20. Guys, uh, the rule of three. Right? Guys, you divide by three women, you multiply by yes, three. That's wow. It. That's, the, that's the truth. Now, math. is that all like same time or is it individual? No, 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 oh, no. Okay. It's, no, it's like when it, whenever, when a guy tells you how many, how many girls that he yeah, slept like with, 12, you right? divide by Four, three. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And when a girl tells you, you multiply by three. Mm. I think it's, I think there's, it's, it's pretty standard. It's, I'm pretty much yeah. science. This is science. It is science. They did a study on this. Yes, they did. So, no, so, anyways, uh, uh, what what I really like is, um, you know, sometimes there's a, I, I shared the mishap with the magic spoon cereal, right? And what happened. And I have Katrina um, email customer service and go through it. And, and, you know, she's still got Garcia as a last name. And so unless you're like a super fan of the show, like you don't connect the dots of mm -hmm. like her email is attached to me or anything like that. Right. So um, so we had our first like thing with public goods. Um they uh the my this little spray bottle at first i i'd like a dumbass i didn't see that it was wasn't it wasn't turned on it was mm. on off still and i i squeezed it so you just did the guy thing oh it's not working apply more force yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, ah. and broke it right and uh, like, son of a bitch that's like my that. go-to and uh, i tell katrina oh you know what this is let's see how they handle this so I tell Katrina, I say, hey, could you send a message uh, to email uh, Public Goods and let them know that uh, our spray bottle, you know, the first spray I did with it, it, it broke right away. And uh, sure as shit, they, they responded right away and uh, received yesterday the new- Such good customer service. Yeah. And they also kicked in like, uh, they, I, they must have gone through our previous orders and see the stuff that we ordered and set us up with some uh, free detergent that came uh, in there. I like the soap. Oh, yeah. I like the smell of their soap. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? The, mm -hmm. the one you use for, oh, it smells really, it's really good. Really yeah. good, really good stuff. I do that whenever I'm, this is my, <laughs> I do this all the time. It irritates me and everyone else. When I'm putting something together, so, and you know, obviously these days I'm putting a lot of shit together because we have a baby, so there's always something to put together. Oh, I got uh -huh. the new high chair. Oh, I got this new thing, whatever. Is that when a part doesn't fit or something's not right, <laughs> my instinct is just to apply more force. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know why it's not fitting. Yeah. And then it's a crack. Ah, oh, I broke it. Yeah. Damn it. I do that all the time. It's so annoying. I hate having the wrong tool. That's the worst. You know, it's like you're... You so a lot of times, um, you know, I'll, I'll go through the junk drawer or something to try and like, you know, just make it happen. And then you try, you're trying so hard, uh, you know, to make the, like the, the wrong type of screwdriver kind of fit, you know, within that. I need a smaller one, but I don't have it on hand, but I still have to get this project done. Yep. And then you Use just strength and <laughs> you know, it'll hammer it in. And then it breaks. Yeah. And then <laughs> and it breaks. Done. Dude, and this, then you blow it. Dude, this morning. So, you know, what's funny is that, um, and I think this is more science. I think. So you know how they talk about how there's that, like, I don't know if it's a myth. Some studies say this happens. Other studies say it's not true. But you know how they say that women, when they hang out with each other, their menstrual cycles oh, yeah, start been, to match? That's been debunked. Well, it yeah. has, but there's studies that say that it might be true as well. Just Who knows? naturally aligns. There's this evolutionary theory behind it that their menstrual cycles align. They're that way, they're not necessarily uh, taking each other's men because they're fertile at the same time, and it's just this, mm. this thing for the tribe or whatever. I've heard that argument before. Anyway, something similar happens to men, right? Now, we obviously don't have a menstrual cycle, 
We man, although, we man street. Although some of us, uh, our moods change like that happens. You know what I'm talking about, Justin. <laughs> I did. But, uh, Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> Very moody. Yeah, but yeah. we don't, we, it doesn't happen to guys, right? But here's what happens to guys. And I've noticed this with you guys because we work with each other all the time. We all poop at the same time now. Yeah. It's very interesting. <laughs> I'm almost I'm almost never. It's like clockwork. Almost never have I gone poop and what you guys is in the stall or we're walking in at the same time. Yeah. I'm almost never pooping alone now, which yeah, is yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. Interesting. I yeah. don't know. It sucks for the third guy, though. Right? It, does. it does. Yeah, it yeah. sucks when so you're not. This number, happened today. You got to right? wait around and listen to noises and stuff. It's so this, this happened today. Too, yeah. So I'm in the toilet, right? And, uh, and now there's another guy. And here's the thing. We're usually the ones using the bathroom. It's, a, it's like this community bathroom so our studio we share a bathroom with like other tenants and we're you we we're the most here all the time other the other tenants are always so i think i can count on one hand how many times actually i've seen yeah, somebody yeah. else in our bathroom yeah not Bare, very barely ever not very often right but anyway i'm in there and um and i know everybody's shoes here at mind pump i can tell like you know <laughs> it's, either it's either gonna be converse or size 12s yeah. or doug's uh you know doug i know what his shoes are so this guy comes so someone else comes in i can already see it's none of our shoes, so it's some random person. So he's on the toilet. I'm on no the toilet. Nikes with floral yeah. pattern. Adam, like that. Adam yeah. walks in. He's oh, we're doing team pooping again. And he starts talking, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I said some random person's in here, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not Justin. Bro. Uh, no, <laughs> you yeah. make the poor guy feel yeah. weird. He's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck. What's what? happening? I don't want to be part of this. <laughs> get, me, <laughs> get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> kind of weird well, thing they're doing over here. Yeah, huh? dude. I have a, a, a hilarious like little fun fact actually. Uh, it doesn't have to deal with like women's menstrual cycles, but uh, so the term hard on, right? That yeah. We use for guys, right? So yeah. there's an actual term for, you know, the sort of the lady boner that uh, Australians use. You know what it is? What? A wide on. Whoa. Whoa. I was like, whoa. That's, that's, that's really hilarious. a thing. Wait yes. a minute. Yes. I, I'm getting all kinds of weird images. So that's referring wide to. Wide on. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. What is it referring to? Wow. You need a visual there, buddy? <laughs> well, I mean, that's the first thing I got <laughs> was you, a visual. You, you your, I've never heard that before. I thought that was hilarious. You know what? You know, so when women when women get aroused, they get blood flow. So the, their their vagina is, is, is made with spongy. I'm glad we have him I know, to explain yeah, this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. I just really don't know how this works. Let's get into the science. Tell me. It's got, the, it's tell a, me about the vagina. Please. There's spun, there, it's it's got spongy. Um, we need it, like a chart similar to the penis, right? It's this yeah. tissue that engorges. So a, a woman's. This is all book knowledge, by the way, too, because he's only seen two. I've only seen uh, <laughs> my whole life. I've only seen Adam and Justin. Great book smart. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're it, we're out there in the world. Break yeah. it down, you know, doc. Break it down here. Yeah. Uh, thanks for I, me, I learned by action. Thanks for letting me look at your yeah. vagina, Adam. But, <laughs> no problem. No, it's uh, it, they get the 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 part of the female anatomy that's homogenous to the males, right, is the clitoris. The clitoris becomes erect. Yeah. So they actually get like a little tiny boner. It's a white like, on, you guys. Like a guy, do, like I, a guy does. I want to know how you heard that. or how, how I, I heard it on some podcast. I don't remember where, but it was just like, I just stopped everything I was well, doing. I was like, ah. Well, speaking of like funny euphemisms or whatever. So, I, you know, you guys know how I said once on a podcast, and I've had so many people share this, where I said that People who wear a mask in their car when they're driving alone oh, yeah, yeah. probably also wear a condom. Great, they, great line. When they jerk yeah, off, right? You have a few in your sleeve. So I did that as a post, right? And so people were sharing it, whatever. And then I had all these people from the UK tell me that there's a name for that. You guys know what it's called? Jerking <laughs> off with a condom. It's a thing, apparently. You know what they call it? Uh -uh. A posh wink. What? <laughs> it's called what a posh. What does that even mean? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I know posh means kind of like, you know, like wealthy or whatever. So it's just it's like a like a wealthy thing to do. Like I don't want to clean this up. Wow! Uh, you, you, uh, you could just throw away condoms all yeah, day. Yeah, That's yeah. what that is. Yeah. So I just like, I'm just gonna do this. And like, so it's know. like it's like the the rich man's sock version. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. It's <laughs> like you do that in your sock. You wear that again. I do yeah. that in a condom. That just yeah. sounds <laughs> super depressing to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you put a condom on and not getting action. Yeah. You're just yourself. Like yeah. come on, dude. Just, That's a lot of work. It's another. Just, it's another step. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What are you doing, bro? You're not protecting anybody. Yeah. You're afraid of your own STDs. You're misusing it. Yeah. Anyway, it's called a posh, <laughs> okay, posh wank. It's always good to know. It's never. always good to get this uh, this science stuff going on. Never, yeah, never uh, heard about. Hey, that. speaking of more science, I've been experimenting with a new uh, nootropic. Um, I've talked about this before, but uh, I started a new one, huh? Yeah, I started experimenting with uh, nicotine lozenges. Have I told you guys this before? Oh yeah, uh, do we bring it up? Yeah, uh, a long I mean, time we, ago. You've told us. I buy them, sure. so I have them. Yeah, so I've been doing so. So okay, I'm not. I'm not advocating for this. So right. and you know, here's the deal. By the way. When people hear nicotine, they think of cigarettes and all the health uh, detriments. Mm -hmm. The health detriments from cigarettes don't come from the nicotine. They come from all the shit that you're inhaling oh, and all that stuff. Toxic chemicals. Yeah, there. nicotine itself is actually not 
bad for you. It is addicting, like caffeine is. So it is a substance that your body will build a tolerance to, and then you'll feel like you need it. Mm -hmm. So it is. it does have addictive properties, but it's not bad for you. And in fact, in some studies, it actually improves cognitive function, um, especially in, 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 believe it or not, in people with cognitive decline. It's actually mm -hmm. been researched uh, to help people with uh, like uh, dementia and stuff like that. But anyway, I started experimenting with it, and it definitely is... Uh, a bit of a nootropic. It's like almost like a. It's it's got this weird like wakefulness and relaxing effect at the same time. I love it. I mm. we, we I went on a kick for a little bit here on the show where we I would uh, have our a cold brew and then one of those yeah. before we record and it I did. I felt sharp, but it, you you quickly adapt. Yeah. You need more. Yeah, you start yeah. Really ramping. And then, yeah, and then I went. I was doing two of them, and then I was like, oh, okay, I see where this is going. And so then I because it's bad. an addicting, you know, yeah. compound. Yeah. And it very, you know, you got to be careful of that like your personality. You got to know yourself if you have that personality where mm -hmm. you'll just. Keep, I do. Yeah, and so if you <laughs> I don't recommend it to most people because of that exact reason. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've never brought it up for those reasons. But uh, you get the balls to say that on the show and go ahead and massive defend I, uh, yourself. I actually <laughs> in, 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 in fact, <laughs> <All> right, vagina <laughs> guy. <laughs> such a, that's such a 90s yeah. way of joking and teasing guys by the way you know no, nobody does that anymore you know, right? yeah. we're the only ones no but uh, yesterday I overdid it right so I was doing the nicotine and I was like uh, the lozenges and I was like oh this is kind of cool and then I was watching I was doing some kind of research because we have some interviews coming up and I wanted to be prepared so I wanted to kind of stay alert and awake and, and you know so I'm watching these things so I'm popping these nicotine lozenges yeah yeah I went too far, dude. Have you tried this? Yeah. Where you take too many? Well, it'll make me nauseous. Oh, bro. All yeah, of a sudden, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh. It's just like, you know what it reminds me of? It was not of? good. Room spinning. Oh, it was not good. You know dude. what it reminds me of? Have you ever accidentally like swallowed some chew? Like, oh. You, oh dude. It's like that feeling. If you if you have too much of that stuff. I've never. I, uh, dude, and that was the thing. A lot of my friends, because baseball, you know, apparently, like, you know, you're trying to be like the pro baseball players <laughs> yeah. and put chew in and be cool guy. Uh, and I kept like, yeah, I'm going to try this. And every time I would just get so green and then completely <laughs> ghost white and throw up everywhere. Yes. Like, it just, it, and I couldn't, and like, oh, you'll just get used to it. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> the 10th time, blah, yeah. I'm over it. Yeah, it's no. not working. No, I mean, I, I did, so when I turned 18, you know, when you turn 18, certain things become like legal, but not like drinking, right? So when I, I don't know about you guys, when I turned 18, I was like, what can I do now that I couldn't do before? So yeah. I know I could buy chewing tobacco. So I was driving to work. This is when I was uh, uh, I was a trainer. So I was driving to work, and I bought some chew at the gas station, and I didn't know that this would happen. I thought that I could I would notice and stop, right? Like, oh, I could just stop, right? So I took some of the chaw or whatever, stuffed it in my lip, and I started driving. And I'm driving, and all of a sudden, I was like, oh, <laughs> oh. And, oh bro, I opened the window and like, this blue uh, chunks. only time in my whole life I've ever thrown up while driving outside the window. It was, it wasn't good. Yeah. yeah. So it prevented me from ever doing that again. Yeah. <laughs> it was good deterrent at least, I guess. For yeah. Me, so. yeah. Yeah. Stupid. Speaking of our interviews that we have coming up, we have uh real soon here, Doug, what day, what day are we releasing the sugar, fat, salt uh, interview that we did with, uh, with Michael Moss? Yeah. 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 yeah it's next Wednesday. Oh, that's that's going to be a good one. Yeah, Did you guys see some uh, great information? He's yeah, that was that's going to be a really cool interview. I, I enjoyed that conversation. We didn't get a chance to talk about this, but I wanted to bring it up with you guys. Have you guys seen what? Uh, can't, so there's some stores that are um, banning. Or it's either stores or states. I can't remember which one. Maybe Doug can fact check me. Uh, that are banning the the candy and stuff at the front. And to where kids, because that, that's like obviously a, a huge strategy, right? Mm, is, oh, right? You know, is when you're waiting in line, everybody knows that, you know, you don't put Last a second items. Yeah. yeah. The, the Snickers bar three inches from the ground is not to appeal to adults. Mm -hmm. It's you're holding your kid's hand, you're in line and there's it's, it's a dirty trick. Yeah, it is. Right. So I obviously, uh, you know, some of these places are, are aware of this and they, they think that they're going to. Uh, eliminate that. Have you guys seen that? Did you guys know this? No, I've, I uh, I don't know specifically, but I did. Uh, I have heard uh, that they've talked about you know doing this kind of stuff. Uh, now here's here's the thing. I don't have a problem. Uh, you know, you, you guys know me. I'm pretty like allow the market to kind of work its way. Whatever. But when it comes to kids, that's mm -hmm. where I have a little bit of an issue because I don't think it's the same thing as an adult making a decision uh, for themselves. Now, I know parents are in, uh, are ultimately in charge of the kids, mm -hmm. but I I think. Uh, Marketing is so effective and aggressive that um, I, I don't think I don't think it's fair to just hammer children with this type of messaging. Mm -hmm. So Berkeley was the first city to do it. Okay, back so, in September of last uh, year, that that town of 
Freedom. So, well, <laughs> the well here's here's your free market, yeah, yeah. right? So, yeah. what it, what is well, they the, decriminalized? Uh, you know, uh, psilocybin, right? Yeah, like, stuff like that. But yeah, it's I, I agree. It's, now, did you see the response though? Now, what is what is Candy coming up with to respond to that? And they've created this uh, robot candy thing that follows you oh in the store. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, serious. Oh, we'll get around this. Yeah, look yeah. it up. Look at look it up. <laughs> Doug, uh, robot can, candy pieces. machine that follows you. It shoots kids with candy. Yeah. <laughs> Mom, I mean, uh, this is good. I mean, the libertarian in you has to love the the response, the free market response. Right. Like, All right, just take a us nice the, little pivot right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. take yeah, us out of the robot front. now. <laughs> we'll, we'll just follow you around the aisle all the, all yeah. the time. Wow. Yeah, isn't that funny? That's hilarious. You cannot leave without the candy. You know what though? Okay, so I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Imagine you're walking with your kid, right? Your kid's like five, and you're walking in the store, and the robot's like following him. Do you want some candy? We should. Have, hey, do you want to play a game? Yeah. Like, aren't you gonna be like, I'm gonna kick this robot in the head right? Now. Right, you keep talking to my kid about this bullshit. You're yeah. like, look what we we got rid of the front. Now this is worse, right? So I'm I'm wondering what. We'll yeah, check this out. Look at look at. Wow, look uh, at that. It actually follows you around. That's a dick move, dude. I'm not gonna is. lie. Yeah, that's aggressive. I uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. That's a dick move because you know, okay, here's the deal. Okay, when I'm hungry and I go grocery shopping, this is me, trainer, right, self aware, fitness, health guy. I avoid the aisles purposefully. With the shit that I know is going to be tempting. Yeah, for your well, kids yeah. or now, you? I, me. Oh, okay. Even me. Now, I can't imagine if I'm in the grocery store and there's a robot following me around with potato chips. You sure you don't want one? It's yeah. Really good. They're free. You can have one. This is really good. Gluten-free or whatever. Organic. I'm like, oh, all right, I'll have a couple. There is there is one good rule that I, everybody should follow when grocery shopping that I think that I still make make the mistake. I'm always reminded when I, when I make this mistake, and that is just do not go to the grocery store on an empty stomach. No. Yeah. When you go on an empty stomach, like rubbing one out before a date. It's, <laughs> it's exactly it's the same what, thing. Yeah. It's, 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 you you want to be in a clear state of mind. That's yeah. called post nut clarity. Yeah. yeah. So in that. this case, you want to be advice. you want to be fed before you go do that. It's amazing the the choices I make, how different they are. If I go there, I haven't ate four or five hours. I'm really hungry, and I'm going to go grocery shopping. The stuff that lands in my cart versus yeah. just had lunch, head over to the grocery store. I know what I need to get or what's on the list. It's like never yeah. text uh, your any girl, ex girlfriends when you're drunk either. It's like yeah. same thing. Like yeah. it's or not be on gonna, Facebook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> please, please. Have you guys ever seen <laughs> shut down family or friends when they'll do a tat, like a, a Facebook oh. post and you're like, oh, they're drunk like, right okay. now. That's not Somebody's good. Somebody's lit. Yeah, yeah. That, that just actually just happened to. I won't sell this person out. They're a friend, they're a mutual friend of Katrina and I, and he was text drunking, uh, drunking, text drunking. <laughs> Drunk texting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Someone's yeah. drunk right now. Pretty sure that dyslexia thing is true. <laughs> oh, no. Pretty sure it's Just true. Just reverse it. Yeah, it's natural. <laughs> we understand. You bro. knew what I meant. Yeah, right? dude, so I got you. He uh, was uh, messaging, and then we, they go way back too, by the way, and we're also friends. And uh, he was texting her back and forth, and then there's also a thread in our phone that has me, him, and her, and I don't think he realized. Oh, no. What yeah, happened? yeah, no. So, I mean, he was like aggressively like flirting with No, him. he wasn't. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's a friend of yours? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm okay with it. I've, I mean, I knew he was, he's had a crush on my girl since the forever, you know? That stuff doesn't bother me. I really don't get bothered. I mean, I know my girl. I yeah, but if you're confident and everything, yeah, but yeah. it's still I, I actually, a little bit. You know what's like, actually hmm. funny? I actually feel more sorry for him because I didn't it respond, is. and you know he knows. It's pretty sad. Yeah, and so I know he's like freaking out and turning inside, like, oh my God, dude, I fucked up big time. I just wow, sent a dude. message like that. Yeah. Wow. And it was pretty bad, too. But now here's a part oh. that would bother me because wow. I'm pretty confident, too. So, you know, that if someone hits I'm like, whatever. Okay, I get that. But if it's a person that pretends to be yes. my friend, I don't agree. That's with, where I feel. I don't agree with that. You get hell upset when I send Jessica pictures at like 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. You know? yeah. So well, she, they are naked pictures of you. I know, but still. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're all family. I mean, we guys. both laugh at them when you say that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let's kind of cross the line out of yeah. 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 I haven't said anything yeah. yet, but. I know he looks know, like he's 12 uh, in this picture. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he looks like. Isn't that weird? <laughs> But, yeah, uh, that just happened. This literally just happened like two nights ago. Oh my god! Yeah. See, I would be upset wow. because it would feel like, you, like, bro, you're my friend. You're like, what? Yeah, a, like, like, like well, snake. what are well, you I doing? Mean, well, first of all, he's he was her friend first, so they go back almost. I want to say, oh my god, I close, know who this is. Close to twenty years. Yeah, They're like fifteen to twenty mm -hmm. years. I know who this is. And so we've known each other for like eleven. And you know, I, he's always loved my girl. You know, what I'm saying there's very there's very few guys that I know in my girl's relationships that she has that that would not kill to be married to her. And oh so, yeah. 
you know, I'm aware of that. You deal with that. And I know how, you, how platonic the relationship is on her end. And so, you know, it doesn't really, whatever. Dude, it's so funny. I, well, this didn't happen recently, but a while back, it's just always funny to me when uh, you run into people that like were in love with your girl. Right. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. And then they, they find out that like, Oh, you're married with kids. And then you just see their demeanor, just like get crushed. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Hey buddy, <laughs> you know? how are you? Oh, I heard things about you. <laughs> yeah. Like you're, your friends <laughs> always in the friend zone yeah yeah just so the guy just so the guy to rub, oh, rub it I, I love rubbing it in yeah. i'm like you know what we should all hang out and yeah. i give him my number <laughs> yeah. that's usually what i do you know you, you know you should have done yeah. adam uh, you should have replied i haven't said with a yet. dick pic with, you should have replied <laughs> <laughs> with your that would have been the ultimate yeah thing. bro like, oh yeah like hey hey bro i'm down you know and just send uh, a picture yeah. back and just see what he said oh, oh, like, hey man room for more uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey she's not down but yeah, you know yeah, yeah i am i'm pretty down yeah, I'm definitely down. Uh, let's have a good time wow that'll get real awkward wow yeah. dude that's weird that's yeah. kind of that's sad, yeah bro. i mean i mean i feel like it not responding has to just create so much more angst for him than anything like i mean knowing that you sent that you know the next day and seeing that it's like oh Oh fuck! Yeah, like, yeah, dude. like before, I she thought I was text like I was, framed in yeah. your house. Before yeah. I was sending those messages to his wife, thinking that she's not sharing with him and thinking that we have this thing right. But then now I really know I fucked up. Oh my god! god. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's terrible. Like, well, I know things about you now. Well, yeah. I have some bad news for you, Adam. So I know you just told <laughs> oh, that. Oh wow! I just laid on. Yeah, this big pile on this poor guy, guy right now. Down, no, no. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I was. I read this and I was like, mm. uh, I, I, I want to wait for the podcast. Is interesting, but I almost didn't wait because I was concerned. But anyway, this is because we brought up his hip thrust. I know. No, no, that's where this is. No, 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 no. I was legit worried about this because I love you, right? So I read this art study that connected. You ready for this? Small calves with a, a with a shorter life expectancy. There's an actual study that shows this that people with small calves have a shorter life expectancy. I'm so glad you're concerned. Yes, yeah, so there's two <laughs> there's two things. Oh. I want to know how you're more concerned about me than yourself right oh, now. That's no, right. Yeah. I'm out of this conversation. I think so, I think my, my life <laughs> just is gonna live forever. I'll live forever. I dude. think I'm you know my mine might be affected a little bit, but I was like, damn, Adam screwed. Yeah. So uh so two things. One, we're gonna you know I want to make sure we stay healthy because we want to offset that a little bit make yeah, sure yeah. you don't and two we gotta get that life insurance doug set up quick before yeah. <laughs> it kicks yeah. in you know <laughs> no but can you believe there was a study that showed that small calves that's so hilarious <laughs> all right what, like, I, what, what does do, it have to do with i think did you read the whole thing or did you just read the, the i read an article about it and i laughed about it because you know studies like this all joking aside all right all joking aside adam's a, a healthy guy he's probably not going to die you know, shorter than whatever well how yeah. about the calf compliment that would have been a good place huh? to insert that right there <laughs> <laughs> i actually posted my uh my socks that i was wearing uh two days ago i don't know if you have my snoopy ones did you see those no i didn't see them. Yeah, so I posted on my story, and uh, I actually got like several DMs like, "Man, you st you get teased all the time about your calves. You have nice calves." I was like, yeah. "Thank you, man. Actually, yeah. I actually have decent calves. You know, like they just look smaller because everything else is massive around it." Yeah. That's what <laughs> I mean. That reminds me of this. Uh, like, I get sent random art. <laughs> <laughs> or it could also be like right, the guy that's always like, "Man, I'm so fat." You know, people go up to me, "Hey, you're not that fat, yeah, bro." Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, just make me feel yeah. better. Yeah. <laughs> Like not that fat. They're not. Yeah. They're not that bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's actually yeah, a good they, strategy. They some problems. Yes. You downplay it. So I had a buddy yeah. like this that would that would make jokes about having a small penis I all a, the time. I had a buddy yes. the same way. And the reason why he did this was because he had an average size penis. Lower the expectation. So when he would have sex with a girl, she was like, like "You know what? You're you're huge. That's not bad. Yeah. I thought you said." And then it was okay. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, so it's a, it's a good I, strategy. I agree. It it is. Adam's I, a bit of a ninja with that yeah, kind of shit. So that's pretty good. No, I get I get I get sent random studies all the time. Usually they're about cheese you know and i'm just like thanks you <laughs> always get such cheese oh stuff. dude there's one that, that, like the, the the popular one is that uh it has the same response as like heroin you know for your brain yeah. and i'm just like dude okay um <laughs> and, and, you know and then there's the other one that i just got recently where they're just trying to justify like eating da dairy in general you know and it's just like it's just hilarious to me that uh because of people in their intolerances and all that i guess the whole millennial uh culture itself has like eliminated all dairy in the dairy industry is like scrambling right now because they're eating like nothing but like nut milk and uh, you know everything else besides dairy. I read that somewhere too. Like the, it's it's been taking a dive. Stupid, like, yeah, stupid. If, if okay, if, so if, this whole, like, if you have a dairy movement, exactly. If you have a dairy intolerance, don't have dairy. That's it. If you don't have a dairy intolerance, 
There's lots of nutrients and benefits. Are to you it. kidding me? Yeah, High quality dairy is one of the most nutrient dense foods. It's very healthy. It's very good for you. Now there are studies that'll show that oh, when you drink milk, it actually can cause. Here's where those studies come from. It's because we were sold for so long that fat was bad for you yeah. that people were drinking non-fat milk, which essentially is like a, a protein sugar drink. Lactose. And uh, it would cause issues. With no, water. Well, it would cause issues with people because a lot of the nutrients in, in milk don't get absorbed because yeah. the fat isn't there to, to uh, enhance absorption. Drink dairy in its nat and eat dairy in its natural forms if you don't have an intolerance. It's one of the most healthy food okay. you can possibly I really have. feel like that was Justin trying to assist you to the Organifi commercial and you missed it I completely. Know. Oh, no. Was that what that was yes, right there? Yes. That was, wasn't wow. it? I'm too ninja. Wow. Bro, up, get better, bro. I was, I was going there, Let's but now you, now you called me out. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a weird... Yeah. Oh, a little too obvious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little too obvious, yeah. Adam. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, before we get to Organifi, and we will get to Plant -based, Organifi. Plant-based, uh, you yeah. know, protein. Yeah, no, and, and, yeah and, 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 okay. We'll, we'll just talk about Organifi first. Then I want to go back to the heroin comment. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah, it, you, definitely if you have plant-based sources of protein, like protein powders, you want to have a blend of different plant-based uh, proteins so you get a more complete amino acid profile because mm -hmm. uh, plant-based sources of protein are not as efficacious as animal on a gram-per-gram -gram basis. So like Organifi's protein powder has got multiple sources, so you get a better amino acid profile. And it's just it's just good. I can't have dairy, so that's what I take when right. I take protein. Yeah, with powder. your twelve eggs. I said, did you get heat for that? You always, always. do. I think that's why you post it all the time. I love it, dude. Twelve yeah. egg yolks and, and oh, Organifi protein. People trip out on like, that. Huh? Oh my god, you're gonna yeah. die, bro. No, uh, that's yeah. an expensive shake, though, right there. Is that the? Is it? Of course it is. Twelve, 12 eggs, eggs and Organifi. Well, how all, much is a dozen eggs? Organifi is already eggs. on the uh, the like upper end of what the well, a dozen eggs for the organic like free range. Yeah, yeah. I get the I get pasture ready. What are they? Five six bucks. So what? Yeah, you you order like price. $25, $30 breakfast every morning. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> One Starbucks drink. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know? Basically yeah. the same yeah. thing. Now, back to the heroin thing when they say ch that cheese lights up your brain like heroin. I hate studies like that because, okay, Me fine. A, a, an fMRI showed that the brain looks similar on heroin and cheese. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever done fucking heroin? Okay. It's not the same thing. Okay. I've never seen someone eat cheese yeah. and look like someone who's yeah. doing heroin. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't work that way. What are you way. showing yeah. us up there? You're Doug? not going to destroy your whole life on cheese. I was just curious about the blend of Organifi. They it's have, right there, protein yeah, blend. Yeah, yeah, pea protein, flaxseed, organic, quinoa, pumpkin seed. Yeah, so pea protein by itself is one of the better sources of, uh, of plant-based proteins by itself. It's got yeah. one of the best amino acid profiles, but then they blend in those other ones. And they also have a digestive enzyme blend in there as well to, to help with assimilation. Which so. that probably really helps because you're the type of guy that would take that after eating anything anyways, right? If I was going to have like a, a high protein meal, yeah, yeah, I, I, I probably would you know do something like that. In do fact, you, does Justin, you do that still? I know you were doing that for a while too. I remember you guys both. I'd no, say. he was taking um, something for uh, gut health, but it wasn't that. Yeah, yeah. Are you still doing it? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, I'm still doing that. Does it help? It's been helping a bit. I mean, I in terms of the acid reflux stuff, I've, I've been getting better at it but really i have to go back to like the whole elimination uh, diet for me to, to to just reduce and also it's a timing thing yeah. a lot of times like i have to eat a little bit <laughs> I'm, I'm like that uh, uh what, what do they call that the silver plate special or whatever when you come in early the early bird you know spe like i have to eat around like five six o'clock now really you know? it just does way better for me that's when i eat too though yeah okay. i actually prefer doing that i just feel better straight old man style <laughs> yeah. 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 well i mean I just, I just feel a lot better um when i go to bed after not eating for four or five hours i just yeah. sleep much better that way so yeah that's yeah, just the way I well do another it. okay so i can't explain this one though like somebody sent me this hilarious study that was like correlating uh listening to heavy metal with with getting uh more obese what so what? the yeah. more metal it causes obesity to? yeah <laughs> 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 and they showed like these like metal guys with their shirts off. All, you Maybe because how angst and angry they are, right? I mean, is that something? And then, then they just uh, sit around, get they, it. They literally depressed. plucked like a few like different types of bands that were like there was there's there's quite, weird. There's quite a few metal band members that are that are pretty you know rotund. But it's just like it's hilarious to me. It was like I don't know some. Clickbait. What about Danzig? 
Danzig's I, fucking exactly. Jack, bro. Yeah, dude. What about Danzig? What about our friend Brendan Shapati? Yeah. You know, like uh, as LA dying, like uh, Tim Lambesis was like totally yoked. Yeah. Like, it's it, again, it's it's a hilarious like clickbaity. Oh, thing. are they it's saying the, the band members or the people listening? The, to they're, they're, they're 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 turning it, it into a, an entire uh, genre. Like it, in general, like most people that listen to heavy metal like tend to be obese. It's a it's a it's a correlation. It's a correlation. It's so There's stupid. no like science behind. Have it. you guys ever seen like those posts? on funny correlations like um you know like when when the price of pork rinds goes up you know the stock market does well or when it rains like things that are not connected but yeah, you can yeah. correlate totally yeah, yeah so you, it's there's no connection yeah. you know to something like that <laughs> no yeah. no i think it enhances my workout yeah. so oh my god come on bro yeah. hey, and, and, and see, justin's not obese i see you got uh your <laughs> hail lobster in yeah I know. Yep. Shout out to All Michaela. Hail lobster. Yeah, so uh, this was for Jordan Peterson because, you know, I tell you what. Remind I, the audience of the story because I think it's so cool what they're, they're trying doing. trying to say that. Yeah. So, so a comic book writer, you know, the Red Skull is a, a villain. It's uh, the arch nemesis of oh, Captain, uh, Captain America. America. You don't give up, do you? No. In the original comic books, he was like a Nazi, right? And so he wrote a comic that showed that the Red Skull essentially had a bunch of rules and many of them mirrored the rules from 12 Rules to Life. So essentially they made the Red Skull, they made Jordan Peterson to the Red Skull, this Nazi who's- But explain what Michaela is doing with him and so this what is, I, lo I love what they're so doing. So they took the Hydra logo, which is the logo of the, you know, the evil whatever. Yeah, it's like an octopus or something. Yeah, and she made it into the lobster because, you know, in 12 Rules, he talks about the lobster's central nervous system yeah. Yeah. and how the and way the we react. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. So they made it into something that they could sell as a shirt that they would donate the proceeds or whatever. So this is like a pro, you know. That's what I like. I yeah. love that what they, they are choosing to do because he's such a, a, a prominent figure in the space that every time the media attacks him, yep. that they are going to put a play on, a spin on it, and then use Redirecting the hate in a positive I'm, way. I'm going to tell right. you something. And then give the money directly uh, 100 away. 100%. He's the most, by far, it's actually, to be honest with you, it's quite alarming for me when I see this. Because in politics, you see mischaracterizations uh, mis mis mischaracterizations all the time. You see lies all the time. But what they tend to do is they'll take a piece of something that you say or do and they'll spin it a little bit. Mm -hmm. They almost never do a complete opposite, like, make-up lie, right? They don't do that. But with Jordan Peterson, it's very strange and a bit scary. Yeah. They, they, they literally make things up. It's very interesting. I mean, I've, I've read his books. I've seen all of his talks. I agree with a lot of stuff he says, maybe not everything. Yeah. But the things that they say, like, he's like, he preaches against the things that, that led to Nazism and communism. Yeah. But they'll literally say he's a Nazi. Yeah. And I'm like, that's so weird. Well, it's obviously, so opposite. It, just, it just screams that they view him as a massive threat. Yeah. I mean, and that's really weird. all it is. And, and otherwise, like, you couldn't try and uncover things that aren't even there and make things up to to you know like like paint him as this villain that he's really not. I mean, could you imagine if you if somebody came out and they did a whole you know a t article, New York Times an article, you know, Justin Andrews hates lifting weights and loves running long distance. You'd be like, "What? <laughs> Wrong." Yeah, that's not even like it's not e it, like if but they But you said, know what? The move is to make a shirt of Justin running and sell it <laughs> yeah. and then donate it to like, you know, obese kids or <laughs> some how, shit, you That's know? how he runs. Yeah. I run like this like my arms in tight. Yes, dude. Yeah. I <laughs> I Lots just, of shoulders. <laughs> yeah. Nothing else. Just. Hey, you're, you ever see people run like that? That they're, they're because they can't run very fast because they're exhausted. Yeah. So they're essentially walking, but yeah. then they do this with their arms. <laughs> like, like I'm yeah. running, they're actually. just flailing like yeah. limbs, but they're not really going very fast. There used to be this guy that would run in my neighborhood like that, and I, I swore to God I could walk slowly just as fast as him. But he was doing the motions like yeah. he's running. Oh yeah, and I'm like, you're better off walking. Dude, Dude, my two favorite things to watch uh, people do is is run because of that because you see all types of variations of how people put it together you yeah. know and get their body in motion the other is you know when they punch and, and oh. when they punch like like pads or, or oh, you yeah. know a heavy bag or something and the, just to see what comes out you know when they're when they're attempting these most things. people don't know how to punch oh it's it's great no. i love watching it dude speaking of arms so you just reminded me of something i've uh, been meaning talking to, about my arms right did, yeah i've been meaning to tell oh, you guys mm -hmm. So I mean, always. Max is getting you know a little bit older, right? As time goes on here, and and you're starting to start to see like flashes of his mom or myself and him, mm -hmm. and so this new thing, right? So I, you guys know how he loves to sit and watch country music with me, and yeah. that's like his thing. That's our thing, right? Mm -hmm. So he'll he'll sit there for like an hour with me, and, and or fall asleep on my chest and do that. So lately, 
he's been doing this thing where he'll be he'll sit next to me and he's totally into what we're doing and then all of a sudden he'll go like this with his with his arms and it just happened just the other day for the first time for me and, and i'm like what are you, what is he doing and katrina goes he wants you to to um like tickle his arms I'm oh like, i'm like what <laughs> he's throwing his arms just, out there to tickle him bro so he does this right it feels good and he uh. wants yeah he wants me to just drag my fingers across it and he'll sit there like this the whole oh, time that's so cute and and katrina's like Hilarious. i was like how do you know that's what he wants to do she goes you know the where he gets that he goes that's so my mom used to do that to me oh my god when so i weird. was little and i love that and i, and I go she goes it's something that i've always loved she goes you like it too she goes you think about all the times that i'd like scratch you and rub my nails around your head in the back and i'm like okay yeah, I do like that, but that is so funny that he does that. And she's like, "Yeah, no, it's totally what." It, that is huh. so cute. Oh, it is. It's That's a, adorable. It is the cutest thing ever. And he'll like if you don't figure it out, he'll grab your hand. Like so, if I like, that's how, <laughs> do it like this, yeah, he so kept right grabbing. Here, right here. Yeah, he kept grabbing my hand, and I'm like, "What is he trying to do?" And that's when she spoke up and said what he was trying. And, and then I started doing it. And then of course he just went back and relaxed yeah. and threw his. Oh, hand. that's adorable. I know. Yeah, my so, so my my baby son. So when I was a baby, uh, I used to move. I get excited and I do this with my hands, and I do the same thing with my feet. And I used to like to. I'm very touchy feel. You guys know that. So if I was sitting next to my mom, I'd rub her hand or I'd play with her hair. I was always doing something with my hands. My son is exactly the same way. Mm. If he's breastfeeding, he's playing with Jessica's hair or he's rubbing her back or he has to touch like the blanket. There'll be a blanket and he'll kind of just sit there and rub it. So he's like so touchy feely, which yeah. I love because yeah. now I get to, you know, do that. Well, that's him. interesting. Yeah. Cause my, my kids, it's funny. Cause like for me, I was always like very much like I'm gonna wrestle or whatever. And then like my dad would like tickle me and I like, hated it. Like, no, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like so ticklish, you know, cause I, cause I would lose my strength immediately and it would like dismantle oh my me. God, Adam, we should tickle just, uh, you know, like I shouldn't have <laughs> said that. I, I really shouldn't have said we'll that. Put that on your yeah. Fans cause page. <laughs> It's like tickle torture, but like it's funny to watch. Like my kids are the same way. Like I'll start wrestling with them wherever and I tickle them, and they're like they, they pretend they don't like it, you know. But they're just like, ah, <laughs> dude. And I knew, don't want to stop. I knew a guy in high school that it was when we were like freshmen in that, <laughs> and you knew like, bro, it's because you like guys, you know. But he's young; he doesn't want to really admit it, whatever. Talk about it. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah. what he would do. Like he, yeah, he'd want to get into a tickle fight. You know, you're like 15 years old, bro. <laughs> Like, why are you trying to tick? Why? So I was like, okay. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's try hey, it out. Yeah. Hey, let's tickle wrestle. Hey, uh, hey, it's getting hot in here. We should take our shirts yeah, off. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> we're not going to tickle wrestle, okay, dude? Yeah. I know exactly what you're trying to I do. I got a singlet right. in the back. Let's, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. let's make it official. <laughs> who, who, the winner is the one that holds the other guy down and, <laughs> and tickles him the most. Uh, I don't want to win that bad, dude. Uh, <laughs> Something else is going on oh, right now. Oh, by the way, we're going to film it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I just read the study on cannabis use. In fact, I'm going to pull it up because uh, I, want, I want to bring it up because it's a great way to kind of explain the way that you should read uh, studies or the way that, you know, sometimes you when you look at the results of a study, you have to be a little bit more uh, careful or whatever, right? So it was a 20-year-long stud study done on users of, uh, of cannabis. And what they found is that regular users of cannabis – and so what they're trying to do is they're trying to say, this is what happens when you use a lot of uh, marijuana. Regular cannabis users were more likely to engage in high-risk alcohol consumption, smoke tobacco, use other Ill illegal drugs, and not be a relationship at the age of 35. That's they such were, a terrible study. Well, hold on. They're also at higher risk of depression and less likely to have uh, a paid job. Overall, regular use of cannabis... More than weekly and especially daily use was found to have harmful consequences. Mm, bunch of degenerates. Regardless of yeah, the now, age. now do that same study on anybody addicted to anything. Yeah. yeah. Addicted yeah. to food. Yeah. Addicted to anything. And, and you you'll show that. I mean, that's yeah. what it is. If you're I, I so that's the problem. The problem is it's like the chicken and the egg, right? The chicken or the egg. What came first, right? I think people who self medicate are more likely to do all of those things yes. as well. So you can't, it's hard to say. Now, I'm not saying that long term, regular, especially frequent cannabis use doesn't have side effects. I'm sure it does. Mm -hmm. But you can't take a study like this and say, because you use cannabis, you're more likely to do these things. Because maybe just being a depressed person or being an anxious person or having, you know, issues at home or whatever is what makes you more likely to do all of those things, right? Mm -hmm. So it's so it's something you should look at whenever you read a study. What's causing what? And sometimes it's the reverse. Sometimes it's not what you, you know, what you necessarily think. Yeah, I, I also don't think that it's a good idea to I mean, I remember having this conversation with my little brother when he mm -hmm. was 
getting to that age, right? Of uh, I think it was 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at that time, <clears throat> he has an older brother who was in the cannabis space. I had the two cannabis clubs and, you know, hard for me to tell him, like, don't smoke weed. You know, it's like when I when I'm running a shop like that. But being really concerned with him that it would, you know, consume him to where he's doing that every day. Really hard to be a productive person if you're smoking weed every day throughout the day. It's mm -hmm, just, mm -hmm. I mean, and it, and it's less about it's weed. It's that you're you're medicating with anything. Yeah, because I bet if you took weed away from him, he would do something else. It would be something. Yeah, else. It'd be alcohol or it'd be food or some other drug or something else that he is distract. I mean, when you when you do anything like that, right, especially a, a, a drug at all, right, if you're doing anything, you're 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 medicating or you're distracting yourself from something else that you're not dealing with. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, that's the real study is that like if someone has deep rooted rooted shit that causes them to medicate on a daily basis with anything, right. you're are escaping they, from something? Are they less likely to, for all those things? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I bet you would see the same correlation. Yeah, oh, yeah. I 100% I agree. Yeah. All right. So do you guys hear about what happened to Bitcoin recently? Oh, with Tesla sort of, uh, you know, what would they do? They just rejected the so, accepting it? So or? Elon initially said a little while ago, he said, we will now accept Bitcoin as payment for Teslas, right? So he said that before. Now they came out and said, we will no longer accept Bitcoin for Teslas because of the 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 carbon footprint or the the energy use so so here's what happens to uh, mine it they, yeah when people are mining they have bitcoin like factories that are doing this they right? do and it tr takes a tremendous amount of processing power and energy and a lot of these places are 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 fueled by coal plants especially in, in China so he says we're not going to take any more until they find better ways of mining for bitcoin that's less damaging them anyway because they're no longer accepting bitcoin the price of bitcoin <laughs> Totally just went plummeted. down. Yeah, totally. Just went from down. him saying that. Well, I mean, he also made Dogecoin or Dogecoin or whatever explode because oh, yeah. all he said was it's a cool coin or something like that. So and and, and, now, and now people are pissed because they're crazy like, crazy is that? Well, uh. and, and people are pissed because they're like he's manipulating the market uh. because uh, the truth is I don't know how many Teslas they they had slotted for sale with Bitcoin. It was like fifty. Like okay, what's the environmental impact of uh, of you know fifty cars getting bought by Bitcoin? And he owns, I think they own a tremendous hmm. amount anyway. Is he trying to drive the price down to buy more? Like, what's the or deal? Is he getting ahead of, of all this, like, effort and emphasis now on environmental, uh, you, you know, issues? Like, you're seeing politically, it's kind of shifting more into that whole, uh, you know, direction again. Yeah, yeah I feel I, like he's aware. I, I feel like he was aware of all that stuff beforehand. I, I'm, I'm on the on the side of manipulating the market right like i mean it would be so tempting because it to, dropped a lot well, it went from like fifty nine thousand to 50 like uh, like right away what smart business person wouldn't yeah, that's why i say that, it'd yeah. be so tempting if you have that kind of power where you can tweet something like i don't like something i mean what, what's what's her face uh yeah, kardashian, the kardashian, that kardashian that. when she did it with the uh, snapchat right? crushed it yeah yep. with yeah. one message or whatever yeah i mean it'd be hard not to to manipulate things like that if you knew you could because you could technically get away with like it's not insider trading you're not you know, like you just said something, uh, an opinion, right? You yeah. said an opinion or say, hey, I'm not, our company's not going to do You know this. what, too? I would like yeah. to see, I don't know what this looks like, so I'm just speculating, but I would like to see the environmental impact of creating uh, paper money. You, mm. You're using, you know, paper from trees. You have to use power, you know, plants to make this paper. They don't use out. recycled paper? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a special kind of paper that they use to prevent counterfeiting you know, the ink and all that stuff. I wonder, because sometimes it's not as obvious, right? You see one thing like plastic bags. Oh no, that's bad for the environment. But then when you look at the amount of water and production and transport that it requires for paper bags, you actually see that it's not. Yeah, isn't clear. that kind of calling the kettle black too with him considering that that's how it is with electric car batteries and stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, I was, gonna, Are, I was just going to bring that up. Wasn't there a, a study recently about like, uh, you know, mining for these types of minerals and things, like how much more of an environmental uh, impact that was making besides fossil fuels? Yeah, it's not as clear and easy as you think. Yeah. Okay, so, so money is made from something called rag paper, which is made from cotton and linen. Whereas normal paper is made from uh, cellulose found in trees, so I don't know how, how much of a difference that makes. Rag paper. Yeah, but I know that it's it's obviously special paper. <clears throat> um, they, they, there's like so many steps and things that they do to prevent uh, counterfeit. Well, they're they're printing a lot of it right now. <laughs> well, well, speaking that of much. that and inflation, did you guys see the Tim Kennedy post that he did oh, just yeah. a couple days ago? Did oh, yeah. you see that? Uh -huh. Yeah. So let's talk about this. Pull what, it up, what, Doug. What's so we happening can actually... with this whole gas crisis and? 
uh, you know, why everything is just skyrocketing. Yeah, right? well, there was a, a, a pipe, pipeline that got hacked, and uh, that reduced the production of gas or the transport. Did it get hacked or did it get held hostage or some shit I heard? Well, I heard. it got hacked, held hostage. By the way, I read, I don't know if this is true, but I read that they paid a ransom of $5 million. According what? according to uh, Tim Kennedy, dude, what it, a, they did. And what they a bad it, idea. And they got it. What a bad idea, dude. You start showing that's terrorists what he, that's what he yeah. said. that yeah. you actually will pay, you're going to you're gonna, you're gonna open up a whole can of worms That's there. right, So dude. he tweeted this the other day, so I don't know how, how accurate all these numbers are. So go f- do your own research to fact check here. But I think most those are all accurate. I, yeah, I think those they are accurate. Are. I mean, oh, I don't know for sure, but lumber is up four hundred percent, right? And I think uh, and he doesn't have this on here, but I, I I've read uh, you know lumber, steel, steel like, nail, like anything to produce a lot of the materials for construction. Like yeah. I've talked to a lot of uh, uh, you know contractors, and they've like expressed how expensive yep, the materials yep, are. Right. You know. Gasoline up one hundred thirty percent. National debt. Okay, we can talk about that all day. Whatever. Uh, National inflation is up to 4.2%, the highest highest amount we've seen since 2008, although this is the very beginning. We're going to see- uh, Just wait, though. We'll just tax all of it, and then it'll all reset, right? No. no. Was that the theory? No, it's going to get- We're going to see some serious- And you know what's funny? When they give these numbers, oftentimes they take out food and gas. When they report numbers on inflation- they literally take out the two things that people need the most, yeah. which is food and gas. Is that so true? Just, yes. Yeah. So when you get these reports, like inflation is only at whatever percent, but they don't include food and gas. Mm-hmm. D- that's true. True that's story. Tr- really? Yes, it is. Why? Because they say it's too volatile or whatever, which is bullshit because uh, those are the two things that we buy the most of. Like I'm not buying TVs and shit every single those day. Those are the necessities. Yeah. yeah, I'm buying those things every day. I so. know. I see all the, the the same people that hoarded the the toilet paper are now hoarding gasoline. You <laughs> oh see my that? god! Uh, you, you see, see all the like, like, like plastic bags? Even they're yeah. Filling what up. the like, fuck is what that? Is wrong. Uh, that don't even make sense to me. A, a plastic bag of gas, dude. And then all the gas in the back of your trunk. Like somebody crashes into the back of your trunk. Well, like, people. Okay, isn't there like a like there's a, a risk right with filling plastic containers with with gas, right? I imagine because of well, static. I, I would imagine yeah. also it would eat away at that too. Yeah, I, yeah and good. How, how are you gonna? Are you gonna siphon it out of that to get it into your gas tank? What a headache that would be yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because apparently there's lines at some uh, gas stations that are like an hour or so long because of this pipeline. But even before that, gas prices were were going up uh, yeah. quite a bit. Some of this is due to the reduced uh, supply because of COVID, like uh, lumber and. Mm-hmm. Building materials was a big reduced supply because they shut things down. Yeah. And then there's also in combination with the, this this incredible printing of money, which we still haven't... This inf- Whatever inflation we're seeing now is nothing compared yeah. to what well, we're about. It hasn't made its impact. Well, yeah. that's why, I mean, there's and there's the many, many people that are speculating that we're going to experience hyperinflation. Yes. And yeah. they're like, it's going to be a short-term transient period of <laughs> hyperinflation. That's not a good thing. Like when, when you go to buy something and it's... 15 or 20 percent more expensive it's like add 20 percent to your bills yeah and some people that's and by and by the way you know when they when they do these policies and they say that we're helping poor and lower middle class that's why we're doing this who are the people that are most likely to suffer the most that's right from prices going up right 15 or 20 percent not wealthy people we could afford to pay right more than 20 percent it's people who are living paycheck to paycheck and all of a sudden they're like uh well, do even I buy- if they maintain uh the price point like they're gonna be a lot less like i know companies like they're gonna produce a lot less you know in the market so there was toilet paper companies are actually putting less uh Rolls. sheets in in so they'll have you'll still have your 12 pack of toilet paper yeah but not realizing that rather than having you know instead of having i don't know 150 squares or whatever now it's down to 200 in order to keep the price the same so people right. don't think i'm surprised that a lot of do. them don't do that as a business anyways i mean imagine if you were you know the, the ceo of cottonelle or whatever and you guys i mean how many millions of rolls of toilet paper do they sell a year and you easily could if you're the new ceo you come in you're oh, right yeah. away you want to show shave prof- some yeah, yeah like, they hey, do that hey we're gonna, t- we're gonna take 10 percent off nobody's gonna feel or see a difference yeah, they or, do that no no yeah i was gonna say it yeah do they, they yeah they do do that yeah. yeah that is a strategy so so now here's here's what i'm gonna predict <laughs> yeah and i'm gonna make this do do that yeah they do do that they do do on that wow that was an accidental joke yeah i know uh so here's some i'm gonna say this so that it's on air because this is what's gonna happen right so when when prices go up politicians are going to come out and try to help everybody by uh, enacting, and this might happen on a local level. Hopefully it never, I don't think it'll happen on a, on a big fe- uh, federal level, but they'll try to enact price controls on staple items. Oh my gosh, milk is too expensive. People need milk or, or food. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to say that they can't sell these products for more than this. And a lot of people who have no idea how economics or markets Knows work. Knows that it fucks all the farmers. Well, not <laughs> just that. They're, they're going to think, oh, this is good. They're going to help us. And then what's going to happen is you have shortages. Shortages. You're going to go to the store. Yep. No milk. That's exactly what's No happening. eggs. No nothing. And then you're going to be rationed just like we were with toilet paper. Yeah. Remember when the toilet paper thing happened and you had to go and you went to the store? Yeah. And they said you can only buy one roll. The, what they need to do is allow the prices to reflect supply and demand because that actually attracts more producers and it drives yeah, the real price the down. Space. Yeah, That's yeah. right. It drives yeah. the real price down instead yeah. of creating shortages. Yeah. All right. We're about to get to the questions, but hold on one second. Go on your browser. Go to mindpumpfree.com. Look at all that free stuff, all kinds of guides, and they cost nothing. Download them. Learn some free stuff so that you can get your body in incredible shape. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. All right, now that you've done that, enjoy the rest of the podcast. Our first caller is Johan from Florida. Hey, Johan, how can we help you? Hey, guys, how are you doing? Good. Pretty good right. yourselves? Good, good. So actually, uh, the thing is that I'm calling because I have been having some shoulder discomfort every, every single time I've been doing uh, bench presses or the like, and um, it's gotten to the point where I can't even sleep right or whenever I try to do a bench press whether I do a shoulder press or whatever, it really, really starts to hurt on both uh, of my shoulders. So it's been really getting to me because this has happened before it, uh, I ended up, you know, just waiting out, waiting it out, but uh, I was doing aesthetic and then it came back and, uh, I was right at the end of aesthetic when that came back. So I decided just to take it slow and went back to anabolic right now, but it's still ongoing. And uh, as I was telling you, I can't sleep that well anymore right now due to this comfort. Okay. That's a, that's a pretty common um, issue. Before we get into details, I'm going to ask you a couple other questions. Before we do that, um, it is common for people to have shoulder issues, shoulder mobility issues. I do want to know where the shoulder pain is. It's usually either in the front of the shoulder or behind, kind of behind the shoulder. Where do you feel your shoulder pain? Uh, right in front. Okay. Mm -hmm. So very common. Okay. So typically that's uh, bicep tendon inflammation. So the bicep tendon runs over the front of the humerus. That's the, the top of the arm. And you'll start to get inflammation there, and then you'll start to get pain right on the, the front of the shoulder. And this is a result of poor function in the shoulder. So more presses will actually cause more problems. Now, what a lot of people do is they stop pressing, and then the pain goes away, and they think that's the solution. Um, that doesn't solve the root cause. What you're doing is you're just avoiding uh, movement that, that bothers you, which is okay to relieve the pain, but it doesn't solve um, any of the issues at all. So couple things we need to do. Number one, uh, let's work on some bicep uh, flexibility. So static stretches for the bicep. That's still not going to solve the problem though. What we need to work on is uh, the mid back muscles that pull the shoulder blades back and down and also work on some basic shoulder mobility movements you'll find in a program like uh, MAPS Prime Pro. Like an example would be a shoulder dislocate or uh, handcuffs uh, with rotation or even the wall test mm -hmm. in uh, in Maps Prime, work on those things because here's what here's the deal. Um, you know, extra especially common exercises like bench presses and and rows and overhead presses, uh, you should be able to perform them without pain. So it's it's almost never the case where somebody's body just isn't made for those exercises. It's usually their body just isn't moving right for those exercises. Johan, did you listen to the most recent episode that we did on how to improve your bench press? Yes, yes, I did. Okay, yeah, there's we addressed yeah. some good stuff in there. So yeah. we, we talked about some of the, uh, like, the suspension trainer Ws. I know I talked mm -hmm. about inside there. So a lot of those priming movements, uh, I think, are going to benefit. But back to the bicep thing, do you, I mean, you have to know how to static stretch a bicep, first of all, which a lot – I don't know if we've even taught that on the channel, have we? Um, I, we taught, have we taught a – a bicep stretch? Yeah, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's it a good one to add to the list. Yeah, you literally can grab like a bar behind your body, mm -hmm. straighten your arm out, and then turn your body until you Just feel turn your, away from it. Yeah. yeah, until you feel your bicep stretch. Actually, in fact, if you did uh, some static stretching on your biceps right before you bench press, I I guarantee you probably already feel relief just from doing yeah, that. Yeah, that my my protocol would be so it's the right uh, a bicep stretch is the opposite of what it would be contracted right. So if you contract it. 
and it looks like I know we're on YouTube, right? So if it looks like this, you open up and you completely rotate the opposite way. I hope we zoomed in on your bicep when yeah. you did that. Oh, Damn, Damn. Right look at that. That's, that's yeah. right. That's no pump, Sal. Yeah, that's, that's what it looks like without looking. any push-ups in the bathroom. This wow. is super common, though. <clears throat> is, is the point? Like this is actually something that I would. I, it was a limiting factor for me with bench. You'd inevitably yeah. get up to that point. You'd start to feel a pain either in the front or the back of the shoulder. And so this is where I started to put more emphasis uh, on mobility work and also rotational work to get my shoulder to track better and to be able to feel more secure and stabilized. And so, you know, to get yourself back into that uh, mentality of trying to really stabilize, protect and, and build strength around and support around your shoulders, everything. Okay. All right. Perfect. So again, uh, prime before your lifts, work on shoulder mobility, do some static stretches of your bicep. Do you have those prime or prime pro? I only have Prime right now. I've been doing some of the static stretches with that, with uh, the wall uh, test. D Doug sent him over Prime Pro, so he's got that too. Um, but yeah, I, I would take some of the advice that we did in that in that bench press episode because I believe we address yeah, we all mobility, that. stability stuff for the shoulder. The only thing we didn't we didn't address bicep stretching. Mm -hmm. um, so that that needs to be something that becomes like a protocol for you before you start any of your lifting is get a good stretch on that bicep and then I would do all the shoulder stability work and then go into it. And like Sal said, you should feel, it should feel better right away just from doing that, but it doesn't end there. You got to keep uh, addressing that. Okay. Thank you guys so much. We do appreciate that. No problem. Thanks awesome. for calling on. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, here's the big challenge uh, with uh, pain with people and exercises. Two things, either one, they start to decide that this exercise just isn't for me. I've, right. had, I've heard many times people say things Avoid like, "Avoid it." Yeah, oh, I can't bench, or I can't squat, or I can't, you know, whatever, because of this particular pain. That's a problem because you never solve the issue, and it's a fundamental movement. Pressing horizontally across your body yeah. is a is a pretty fundamental movement. And then the the second issue is that people will wait for the pain to go away, either by maybe they are doing some mobility work, or by avoiding the exercise, pain goes away, and they think the problem is solved. It's actually not solved. The pain yeah. might have gone away, but you still have the issue and the pain will come back. Or they treat the, those mobility drills like an intensified exercise and they like overdo it. And a lot of times, it, you know, like exaggerating the inflammation yeah. of it. And so, you know, there's a bit of a healing process to that as well. But it's, you know, you really have to figure out like that sweet spot of like, a, like it's a continual thing. It's a frequency thing with less intensity. Well, the other mistake they make is the uh, they, they lack the correct intent when they do mobility stuff. Mm -hmm. So one of the challenges I felt that we've always had with, you know, creating Prime and Prime Pro uh, as this, you know, virtual program and not being there to coach it mm -hmm. is getting people to understand the intent. Like you could do a handcuff with rotation and it could be like whatever type of and not even be hard, you mm -hmm. know, just kind of go through the motion and then you could do it. And it will, you'll break a sweat doing five reps doing it because the intent is completely different. So you have to understand when you're trying to gain a greater range of motion, you have to be challenging those end ranges of motion and connecting to those muscles that do that. And that there's a lot of intent there. And if you don't understand how to do that and you just watch a video, you just kind of go through the movements. Yeah. And I, I do want to add to that within reason, right? So just like when you work out, uh, you're not trying to go to failure and you're not trying to go beyond right. a particular limit. So obviously if you're doing a mobility movement and you feel bad pain there's your edge don't go yeah, beyond that's your that threshold yeah don't go beyond that uh you know play within your particular you know edges of of pain you know so it's you know okay i'm connecting uh oh that's a little too far let's back off a little bit and then slowly work from there but i tell you what this front shoulder pain issue from bench pressing i mean at one point this was like my i i, I actually loved it when clients would come with me with that problem because you knew how to release it right away right away it was yeah, it was almost totally. like an easy fix uh you know that particular issue our next caller is Marie from Texas. Hey, Marie, how can we help you? Hi. Um, so I am currently running the PED program, and I'm on the last phase. I'm in the second week, and I'm just wondering where I should go from there to reach my goals, my overall goal. Well, I have, so I have two goals concerning my nutrition and fitness. My first goal, this is kind of weird, but I want to get to where I'm eating 3,000 calories a day. I know that's weird, but first of all, I love food. Second of all, I know it'll also cause me to build muscle because I'll need the muscle to eat that. Um, but I do, and then, of course, my second goal is to be just, like, get back into my um, – I used to be super fit, and not that I'm not anymore, but 
I want to get back to the strength oriented fitness that I used to love. Um, I do have a history of overtraining. So that's why I did PED because even that was a step down from what I was doing. Wow. So I was just, wow. Really, <laughs> Yeah, that's our <laughs> pinnacle <laughs> program. I, I I have a feeling you're gonna know how we're gonna answer this. You're just not gonna like how we're gonna answer this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, is there more? I mean, yeah. If, if yeah, if, I'm if, still kind of trying to work it down a little. <laughs> Even when I did PED, I was doing way too much. I just wow. in the past two months got to where I was doing the three days on, one day off which I still don't really do a day off. So okay. I'm well, still I, trying. I, I, want, I want to say something right now, since this is a perfect opportunity to talk about this. When we wrote PED, part of the hesitancy of us writing it was that it would attract someone just like you. Mm -hmm. Was yeah. that we, we knew mm -hmm. that, the, and, and that was why it was one of the last programs we wrote. We knew that there's there there are examples of people that can utilize that program, that could scale to that volume, and that it, it makes sense to uh, do that. But then we also know that, there's a large percentage of the population that overtrain and they're going to be drawn to something like this when we know better and they, we know that they should, they should be doing something different. And so the program that comes to mind right away for me, knowing that about you is I would push you in the maps anabolic yeah, direction. Totally. Yep. And, and uh, you know, so for, for people who are listening right now, maps PED is a double split, high volume, high frequency routine, meaning you work out twice a day, and you're hitting each body part uh, several times a week, so it's it's a very advanced bodybuilder style program um, that for some people can be extremely effective, uh, but it could also lead to overtraining more so than any of our other programs. Okay, now because you tend to overtrain, that's an issue, admittedly, and the fact that you said that PED with, and I know how much volume is in that program because I wrote it with the guys, the fact that that was a step down from what, what you were already <laughs> doing. Know. That, that's already a lot. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do, okay? How long have you been listening to the show, Marie? Um, Only since December. Okay. I discovered it in December, and then that's when I purchased the program. Okay. Get, now, on a scale of 1 to 10, be honest. How, how much do you like the show, and how much do you trust us? <laughs> um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I like the show at like a – probably a 10. Ooh. Trust. Okay. Now, listen. My dad said – don't hesitancy. trust anybody but family and even them be skeptical. But <laughs> I do like Smart that guy. style specifically. Like you go in and you do the studies because I'm an anthropology major right now. So I love studies. Okay. Um, so I trust that for sure. Uh, okay. All right. Well, you, you tr do you trust this as far as fitness information is concerned? I mean, yeah. I, 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 okay. All right. So you're not going to let me watch your kids, but you trust me with, <laughs> <laughs> with fitness information. Smart. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. Okay. Um, and I'm glad you gave me a little bit of background. You're, you're a logical uh, individual. Sounds like you're intelligent. I can tell by the way you're talking and obviously your, your, uh, your education points to the fact that you can be, you can be quite objective. Now, here's the challenge. Uh, intelligent, objective people uh, tend to be the easiest uh, fooled by themselves, right? Because you're smart, because you're objective, you probably can convince yourself of almost anything. In other words, you may have a feeling or an issue, and then you'll convince yourself of the truth of that issue using your objective reasoning, uh, your ability to reason. And you'll do this with yourself. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to step outside of yourself for a second. I want you to trust the science, and also trust the experts, okay? I'm sure it probably annoys the hell out of you when some keyboard warrior uh, argues anthropology with you because you've studied it, and this is what you're going to school for, and you probably think to yourself, why can't they just trust mm -hmm. the experts? Okay, we're the fitness experts. We've been doing this for a very, very long time. I've trained and worked with a lot of people just like you, okay? I've trained a lot of people just like you, and then here's the, the, the most important part. I am very much like you. Actually, many, many ways, just from talking to you, I can uh, very much identify with what you're going through. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to blindly trust the workout programming. I want you to do MAPS Anabolic and do three foundational workouts a week. So in the program, we give you the option of doing two to three. I think you could probably handle three. And then on your off days, do three trigger sessions a day. Now, the trigger sessions need to be at a, at a low to moderate intensity. And I want you to trust the program. And here's what's going to help you. I want you to start listing the weight that you're working out with and look at the trends of strength. If your strength is trending in a positive direction, then there's your evidence right there. And, and that evidence right there 
being somebody as logical and as objective as you can be is should overpower your feelings of, oh my God, I need to do more, right? So, oh, I need to do more, but wait a minute. The data is saying that I'm getting stronger, so I'm moving in the right direction. So I want you to trust it and go for it. It's a three-month program. Do you think you could do this? Do you think you could suspend your tendencies for three months and just go just based off the science and the data? Um, yes. Um, I think that's like – so this is just a quick background. I was in an inpatient hospital – eating disorder, depression, all that crap. Um, and when I got out, I think I would actually like, if I look in the mirror, whatever, I gained weight, whatever, little depressing, but not too big. But the biggest thing was when I went in the gym and I couldn't do a push up, I cried. Like I literally cried in the gym. There was nobody else there, so it's fine. But mm. um, yeah, so I think that I could do that. My only other issue is because I was so intense with cardio as well, like I built up to like an hour and I was running 10 miles a day and I don't do that anymore, but I still do like an hour a day and I'm trying to take that down. Um, so I don't know how I would do that. I don't, cause I've heard some people say you can just quit the cardio. I've heard some people say tamper off of it while you're reverse dieting. Just switch to walking. Yeah. The, switch the, to walking. Yeah. Don't, don't get rid of it completely. Just switch to walking. That's it. Now do you, I also walk too. Okay. So like I do cardio and walking. Okay. So, so, yeah. so here's, I mean, this, this is might be a more complicated conversation, but, um, it, it feels like you're using alcohol, excuse me, exercise, like someone may use alcohol or other substances. And what I mean by that, and I know I've been there, okay? It's a exercise feels good. It's distracting. It also gives you a very strong sense of control because you're doing something, right? This is something I can control. I can do this uh, when maybe you feel out of control in other areas. So I, I know what it would mean to take it away completely without replacing it with something else. That would put you probably in a pretty scary situation. So do this, okay? Go ahead and continue to walk. Instead of your hour-long cardio, let's take that laser-like focus and that obsession and let's move it to um, yin yoga. Let's yeah, move it to something like that. Yeah, move it to yin yoga, something I that's... Also do yoga. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking walk. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Don't overcomplicate I, this. I don't, don't do anything... I can't sit for more than yeah. that, no, so but that, okay. That's okay. But should I completely stop? No, 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 no. Don't, don't change. You don't. I, I'm not even going to change your schedule. I'm, I'm just walk instead. Instead of getting on like a stairmaster or going hard okay. for that that hour, just walk. It's okay. Walking is totally okay. fine. Totally fine. And even though you walk already intentionally. The cardio session, the high intensity stuff, that's what I want you to stop. That just needs to be walking. So that's walking now or mobility or yoga. I, we don't we don't need to cut out that out of your routine. There's nothing wrong with you just moving, but it's the high intensity thing that is going to be counterproductive to trying to build your metabolism like you said you want to do. Yeah. So we're not going to make you stop that, stop moving or stop going to the gym or wherever you were doing your cardio. Just switch it from high intensity to just be more therapeutic, be walking or doing something that's working inward. Yeah. Marie, Marie, how um, how feasible is it for you to hire a, a coach or a trainer? either online or in person. Is this something that's feasible for you or is that is that out of the you trying to sell yes, meals so right now? actually before COVID hit, I was I actually want to start getting into powerlifting. Like that's my goal. My goal is to just be a badass in the gym again. Like I love when I go in there and people underestimate me and I pick up 50 pound weights and they're like, what are you doing? You're a little yeah. girl. So I was going to start meeting with a coach and then COVID hit and everything shut down. Okay. Uh, I'm starting to look again it's hard in this area. I don't know. Like there's a lot of coaches I'm skeptical about because I just don't, I'll ask them certain questions and it doesn't really click. And I'm like, mm. okay, like, if they want me to eat 1600 calories a day. I'm like, no. Mm -mm. All right, Marie, let's do this then. Um, when, when we, when we get off here, I want you to DM me, remind me who you are. And I'm going to talk to Jason Phillips and I'm going to get a recommendation for a good online coach. He's the owner of NCI certifications. He has a lot of really good coaches working for him. And I'm going to find, I'm going to tell him kind of what we talked about, and then he'll recommend a good coach for you because I think that's going to be essential for you. I think it's going to be essential that you work with someone she's, on a daily basis. She's also in the, she's in the LCK area. 
She's in Laura, Laura Christie King. Okay, well, like, DM me, and I'm yeah. going to see if I can find somebody I, I think, for I think Laura would be great for the nutrition yeah. part. and then, But anabolic right now, and then then I would follow it up with Power Lift. That'd yeah, be yeah. a great program to run right after you do anabolic. I, yeah, love, well, I love that. Do you have MAPS anabolic? Um, No. All right, we'll send, I just have the- we'll send it right over to you. Okay. All right, thanks, Marie. Thanks for calling in. Don't forget to DM me, okay? Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Oh yeah, I about died when she said that PED Dude. was a was a step down for what Bro, she's doing. And ten, then when you guys were trying to give her stuff to do, she's like, "I already do that. I already yeah, do I that." Know. Oh man, <laughs> like, it's like such a busy body that we're we're dealing with here. And I'm just like, I mean, that was the first thing that came to mind. Is like sometimes you just you you kind of have to like play the game of like if you're going to be so busy and, and and doing things, like why don't you do things that are recuperative? I, I'm so glad though that we got this question because I don't feel like we've had the ability to address what we used to talk about off air before we created PED. Yep. This was a major concern of ours. Yeah, we were worried about that. When we wrote and why we waited till the last program to write this was yeah. because we knew that we'd had lots of clients just like this and knew that they would be attracted to that type of a program knowing damn well that that's not the program they should be running and sure as shit here's a perfect example of the client that is that is drawn to that program, but we know that should be in something completely yeah, different. And I mean, the yeah. truth is this, and this is the honest God truth: <clears throat> a person like this is, is harder to work with than a person oh, yeah. who doesn't work out at oh, all. Oh hell and yeah! Oh, this yeah. is a very challenging situation. This is, and I, again, I can identify with this. The exercise is used like a drug, and so you're dealing with uh, other issues. So it's not exercise isn't the problem; it's just the the method. Yeah, it's an outlet. Yeah, there, there, there's a root issue here, and so we could give her all the advice in the world, but I don't think it's going to work unless she works with someone mm-hmm. on a regular basis. It's a very tough thing uh, to work through and break through, especially in the scale down, because once you start to scale down. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? And right. then, oh my God, I'm losing muscle. Mm-hmm. I think I'm gaining body fat. Oh my God. I, I, oh, my, it's just I, paranoia I'm, as you said. Yeah, I'm sitting with myself and my thoughts and now I feel this way and whatever. It's a very challenging situation to get out of. And so I think working with someone, this would, I mean, that, that's what she would benefit from. She has to want to do it though, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Our next caller is Cody from Michigan. What's up, Cody? How can we help you? Hey guys, so happy to be here. Um, I actually have a pretty specific question I would love to get some help on. Um, when I was like younger, about eight years ago, I was surfing and I hyperextended my shoulder when the board hit it, causing kind of the muscles to tear that connected my shoulder to my chest. And since then, I haven't really been able to do like a full range of motion on my bench press and dips and flies tend to give me some issues there. I really thought it was like a bunch of scar tissue until recently when I listened to your why warms are a waste of time and maybe found out that it might actually just be tight muscles and was kind of curious your perspective on how to tackle that so I can kind of get the most out of my workouts. Yeah, no. Um, so um, it's actually a good question. You know, oftentimes injuries lead to long-term dysfunction and if it doesn't get solved, it, learn- it leads to long-term uh, pain and issues. So I've, you know, I've had clients who come to me with back pain and I'll say, okay, well, why does your back hurt? And say, well, I, I actually hurt my back. Like, oh, when did you hurt your back? You know, oh, 15 years ago or something like that, right? So what happens is the injury causes compensations. Nothing gets corrected. Those become your default, right? That becomes your default movement pattern. Um, and then it doesn't get fixed unless you can fix those movement patterns. So what I would do is I would work uh, very intently on shoulder mobility. I would work on some of the movements, for example, that you find in Maps Prime Pro. I would do those on a regular basis. I would prime my movements, and then something easy you can do is f- those challenging exercises, the ones that you when you do them you feel kind of weird or a little off. I would actually practice those movements, stay within your limits, and slowly increase your range of motion. So when you do your fly, for example, go down to the point where you're like, okay, this feels okay. I know if I go a little further than this, it'll hurt me. Don't go heavy, by the way. Whenever you're doing correctional exercise, you're going light. And then slowly increase your range of motion over time. Oftentimes, that by itself uh, can help solve some of the issues. I'm trying to picture the injury right now. So I'm assuming like he went down like this, right? He caught, caught himself on the board and then it t- yeah. tore yeah. right here. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, what happened was is the wave caught me, but not the board. And then when I was kind of doing a somersault in the water, my arm came out and the board caught my arm and hyperextended it back. Okay. I actually dislocated my shoulder too. Okay, well. And when I hit the ground, it popped my shoulder back back into place and then I had a bunch of bruising and pooling in my actual um, 
like bicep from the injury. Na- nasty. And no surgery, nothing you did afterwards. No. So it was just physical therapy for months and I couldn't even bench the bar for about six months. Of course, um, of course. Mm-hmm. And then, so, which this actually brings up like a follow-up question to, to sell your point is if I'm doing my actual workouts where I'm trying to do heavier weight and not correctional, should I just continue to work in my range of motion while doing the other stuff on the side to increase that range? O- only if you want to not improve. Uh, so I, I, I yeah, <laughs> No, don't don't worry about challenging weight uh, while yeah. you're doing correction don't, exercise. Don't forget that there's many ways to. Pro- if you haven't listened to the episode where we did nine ways, I think we called it to progressively overload. Remember, every, we always tend to like, and we're all guilty of this. Huh? Me too, right? Like to go to weight as the way to progressively overload the body to get more results, mm-hmm. and it's only one of the many ways that you can continue to overload the body. And it's someone like you, I mm-hmm. would challenge tempo first, almost always, and range of motion first. So like to progress in in that area instead of like you adding weight to the bar you know pause at the bottom of mm. the the exercise and hold or create like an, an isometric contraction and slow down the tempo or do unilateral work and ke- like a, we were talking the other day about alternating dumbbell presses like these are the type of movements that I'm going to push you in the direction of because we can still build your chest and, and build your shoulders and build the body without necessarily always increasing the weight. Yeah, I would look at this more as an opportunity to really address, um, you know, where you're at in terms of like the the stability and overall function of the joint. And so to, to, to really find the thresholds and see exactly where those lie in terms of your range of motion, like where's my limitations and, you know, kind of can I go there? And can I stay there? And can I increase tension in the muscle and build more support, you know, around that? And then inevitably, it, your body will start allowing you, uh, you know, more range of motion because it's secure there. And that's going to translate back to when you get into weights, you're going to be able to lift more, and you're going to be even more functional and and, and without pain. So. Co- Cody, ahead. have you done? Did you do um, Justin's webinar that he did on Prime? I haven't yet. No, I actually have Prime. I just haven't, to be honest, haven't used it as much as I do, should. Do the webinar yeah. that Justin did. He does the wall. The wall circles to me are like the one of the first things that comes to mind. Like yeah. I would, I would try and get really good at those. And uh, he he takes you through those in that webinar. So go to the go to the free webinar, watch that, and and get good at that movement. We did those specifically too because the intent of it is, uh, and this is something Adam brought up with another question. It's the intent is everything when it comes to these types of drills and really understanding your body and where those limitations lie and like how to gradually progress your way through that. So it's not something that you just all of a sudden you just gain access by doing these miracle type of exercises. It's it's really the intention you bring into the exercise and then it needs to be coached through so this is one of those things that you know we put out to to help you through that process yeah and cody back to the to the you know the using heavy resistance and whatever here's the problem with using uh heavier resistance when you have dysfunction that's causing problems the second you push heavy weight the second you push lots of intensity your body will revert to its to the 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 recruitment pattern that it's most comfortable using, right? So uh, to give you an example, if, if I only ever type on a typewriter with my two index fingers, at some point I'm going to get kind of good at it, right? But I'm never going to be as good as if I used all my fingers properly, right? So if somebody came to me and I didn't practice you know, typing properly at all, I've only ever done with my index fingers, and someone says, type as fast as you can, I'm going to go with, my, with what I know. And, and, and the truth is, that is the fastest way I can type. But if I want to go even faster, I have to back off and practice intently and slowly with a lot of awareness with the, 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 the method and technique that will allow me to eventually surpass my previous best. So if you add weight and you go heavy, you're not going to correct anything. Your body's going to go to what it does best, which is this kind of default you know, pattern and you'll never get any better. So you got to back off. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you can't progressively overload. Mm -hmm. You can still overload the body with things like tempo and isometrics and and slowing the rep down, challenging their end range of motion. Like, so there's great ways for you still to, to build your chest and see progression. We just always say, all of us are guilty of this. We just tend to default to like, oh, more weight, more weight. But it, I mean, Sal's point in a situation like this, you will always go back to your default pattern if you try to increase weight. It's just natural. So, and you got to fight that urge. And I've been doing that. I've, I've, I've just been messing with a shorter range of motion and getting stronger in that. 
specific yeah. like half range. Yeah, that's right. You're actually making your dysfunction stronger. So it, the, the more <laughs> the stronger you get with the dysfunction, the harder mm-hmm. it will be to correct because mm-hmm. it's now a stronger, more solidified uh, dysfunction. So good job. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, well then looking at like MAPS anabolic, right? Which is what I'm currently following. Am I then intended to do with the flat bench press, but working more on the mobility during that, Cor- correct. that cycle versus like the weight. Correct. Remember, well, we remember we wrote these programs for the average person, but you have to listen to your body and you have to individualize it. If I were training you, that's how I would train you. Mm-hmm. I would not train you um, by pushing weight on those movements. No way. That'd be the wrong thing to do. So it's fine with the deadlifts and the squats and the movements that are okay for you. But when you get to those other exercises, you're focused on range of motion. You're focused on technique and mobility and function. You're not focused on adding more weight. And trust me, if you do this right, at some point, you'll go back to being able to push the weight and then you'll surpass whatever you're doing now by far. Well, this is a perfect example again, too, of like, you know, to your point, Sal, we, we created these programs with the intent that clients would learn from the, the stuff we talk about on the show, how to change and kind of mold modify it. it. Yeah. Because anabolic is a perfect like a uh, format or base to be following. I think it's a great program, but like if you were an actual client of mine and we're, we're on anabolic and today is, you know, incline barbell press, you know, I, mm. I might take you to alternating, you know, dumbbell presses in incline instead of that. And I'm going to put emphasis on the, the depth and range of motion, the control. We might add in like an, an isometric pause in it. Like I'm going to challenge your issue and try and get you better at that opposed to just loading the barbell. But then the rest of the program, I'm following it like, you know, right to protocol. So the idea of what we created these is like, okay, here's a solid base for 99% of the population. But then you have these exceptions to the rule like Cody who okay we need to just modify this one thing for him and this will better you so you can follow anabolic but then just adjust little things like that it's perfect time for the call I just finished my first cycle through I'll I'll restart with your guys's tips in mind thank you excellent no problem right on yeah you know the the audience doesn't know the 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 challenges that we actually have had as as, uh trainers creating programs to sell online to the potential masses. Mm-hmm. This was actually a big issue for us because mm-hmm. I love writing programs, but you know, you got to remember I was a personal trainer for a long time. Justin and Adam were both also personal trainers for a long time. Mm-hmm. And when we wrote programs, this is what good trainers do. I don't write a program until I assess someone, until I watch them move. And the program changes with each workout, depending on all of those things. It's extremely individualized. Oh, yeah. Not only that, how many times did you guys call an audible halfway through a workout? Right. I I might have assessed you. I might have uh, seen you a handful of times, wrote your your exercises for the day, thinking that I built something perfect for you, start to see something, and then see something that I didn't see before and go, oh, wow, audible, instead of this exercise, and I'm going to do this instead. Or maybe Cody, I'm training him for a while. He's never mentioned this to me until we get into bench and I'm wondering why he's off and then he tells me that I'm like oh shit well I'm going to address that now and so that is a perfect example. Yeah, yeah, we had to just think of like like foundational, fundamental uh, ways to train the body that that translates to to almost everybody. And then from there, it's like okay, so you have at least a benchmark, a standard of, of what you're trying to pursue. But there's room in there to be flexible, to adjust and modify things, to to individualize. Individualizing it is everything, and and that's just something that comes with uh, practice. It comes with experience and, and knowing what to do when situations like this occur and like how to adjust then so we can bring you back to sort of, you know, that, uh, you know, that framework. Yeah. Well, the truth is we wouldn't be selling online workout programs if we didn't have a podcast that people could learn from if we didn't have YouTube channels with more instruction, if we didn't have a back end. Almost 2,000 episodes, like we've tried to be able to explain all yes. of these concepts that you can then apply within that framework. So it's, it's a lot more complicated, unfortunately, than people think. Our next caller is Jenna from Iowa. Hey, Jenna, how can we help you? Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, I'm a big fan. I am a personal trainer here at the University of Iowa. Got a lot of clients, and so I take all of your guys' advice. (laughs) Um, My question is very personal, though. I am a 38-year-old mother of two, and um, I love competing in strongman and powerlifting competitions. I competed in my first strongman competition this year. Um, 
And about two months ago, my husband and I started a plant-based diet. So I don't call it vegan um, because it's actually more restrictive than vegan. We basically eat plant-based. We try to stay away from processed foods, um, which is pretty similar to what you guys recommend on your podcast. And we've really been enjoying it. Um, It's been saving our family money and uh, my digestion and sleep have improved. My energy levels are amazing and it's cleared up my skin, which is pretty awesome. Uh, But there's been one downside to eating plant-based as opposed to when I was eating meat and dairy and all the fun stuff. And that's my powerlifting weights and my strongman lifting weights have all decreased about five to 15 pounds, uh, which for me as a competitor and someone who really enjoys getting strong has been super frustrating. So I didn't know if you guys had advice on why all the other things in my life are improving, uh, but my strength is not. So any advice you can give would be very helpful. I want to ask one more, a couple questions before Sal jumps in and talks for 15 minutes. Um, do, do you currently supplement with creatine by chance? So I supplement um, with creatine about five milligrams, okay. I think, okay. uh, per day. And uh, I also try to take a uh, protein powder and eat a lot of beans. But um, I know you guys have talked about being vegan in the past. It's it's very hard to eat that many beans mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're pretty bland to be honest. So um, that yeah, was, I try to watch my protein. That was my next question was, do you track your protein intake consistently? Because that would, if you're already supplementing creatine, that would be the first thing. The second thing I would ask is, how consistent are you with hitting 100 grams plus of protein every day? So I'm not consistent hitting that high. And, you know, I've read a lot on uh, vegan plant-based diets. They actually recommend um, a lot less protein per body weight. Um, So I've been anywhere from, I would say, more 50 to 60 grams of protein per day. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's been pretty hard to achieve. Yeah, that's too low. Yeah, That's, That's why you're feeling it. Yeah, if you're um, if if you if, if everything was controlled, right? So if your calories were the same as before, your proteins, fats, and carbs were the same were the same as before. You know, Adam mentioned creatine. Creatine it benefits uh, vegans quite a bit because they don't get any from uh, their plant based sources. So if you're doing that, you're not having any nutrient deficiencies, and everything else is controlled. Um, and then you come and say, "Hey, I'm weaker." Then we're gonna have to look a little deeper. But yeah. I would it's probably due to the fact that you're your calories yes. and or your protein or other macronutrients aren't matching what they were uh, before. Um, now, here, here's what I would do. I would try to get in it. And I know what they recommend with the plant-based, uh, you know, the, the plant-based advice is to eat less protein. And here's why they say that. The reason why they say that is because it's hard to get protein <laughs> yeah. from plant-based sources. There really is no uh, evidence uh, or value of eating, of eating uh, low protein, except for maybe in some exceptions. There, there may be some exceptions to that particular rule, but otherwise a high protein diet, not only is it safe, it's healthy and for performance, it's uh, superior. So a couple things you could do either try to get more protein from your food, but if that's difficult, which it sounds like it is, I would supplement with plant-based protein uh, mm-hmm. powders to make up for it. And then here's the other thing I want you to, to keep in mind. I'm glad you said that your digestion and sleep and skin are better because uh, that is showing that there may be some benefits. Sometimes the benefits are not because you're not eating meat, but rather because you're not eating processed foods or right. other foods that- Or you're you know, incorporating a lot more vegetables than you're used to eating in your diet, which has you know a great effect in, in terms of being anti-inflammatory. you know, inflammatory. So you know, there's some benefits that you're realizing from that, but also too, was it, was it a conscious decision to stop eating meat? Like what was that decision process uh, going into this? Um, My husband uh, read a book called uh, How Not to Die, which was a really popular book published a couple of years ago, showing the links between a plant-based diet and increased lifespan. And I think we did it for our kids, Um, but I got really discouraged because um, it seemed like it was almost impossible to be a strongman athlete or a successful powerlifter and be vegan. (laughs) And so it's just, it's been harder path than I realized. And this is, this is the problem I have with any diet. This is, uh, 
if you guys aren't doing it for any other reason than that, first of all, it's it's not hard to write a book, cherry pick studies, and make something sound like it's better than something else. And if you guys are not opposed to adding some fish or chicken or turkey into the diet every once in a while to increase your protein intake, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I just recently switched over to eating, I should say, a, a carnivore-esque diet. And the reason why I said esque, and I quickly announced it and talked about it on the podcast that I'm not following somebody's protocol in a book that I have to do these certain things. My idea is I'm using it like an elimination diet. I'm, I'm getting rid of a lot of the other stuff, and then I'm just going to slowly add stuff into back into my diet and pay attention to how I feel. Like Sal and Justin both alluded to, you obviously have seen positive benefits for you to switch over that. Now, it doesn't mean that it was that you know meat was causing all those issues before. It just probably means that there you're getting either lots of benefits from eating all the vegetables that you were eating, or you've eliminated a single thing or two that was the offender. And if you're okay and open to it, I would start to reintroduce one one source of protein that maybe comes from meat into your diet and just see how you feel like maybe just start with fish you know because that's going to be probably one of the easiest ones or chicken and see how you guys feel if it helps boost your protein intake you see strength go up and you don't see any side effects from it i would include that in and still run your you know dom predominantly plant-based diet but then you have these little bits of, of protein that you're or meat that you're using for to bump from that would be what i yeah. would do janet janet pay attention to libido pay attention to um you, you said your strength is going down so look at libido uh that's an important thing look at your uh your menstrual cycle or any other symptoms of hormone changes and and this is for your husband as well okay because if you start to see those change in ways that don't seem healthy then what you're doing isn't entirely uh, healthy. I mean, I would even, I would, I mean, I would, I'm actually going to give you different advice than Adam. I'd say throw in some grass fed beef or some eggs, get some cholesterol, uh, get some of those saturated fats in there. They actually have benefits when it comes to strength and muscle. And getting strong is not unhealthy. Uh, getting strong is healthy. Now, of course, you could do it in unhealthy ways, lots of anabolic steroids, lots of, you know, body fat on your body to improve, you know, to increase leverage and that kind of stuff. But if you're otherwise healthy, lean, you're natural, you're not using drugs or whatever, um, and you're getting strong, or if you get weaker, uh, getting weaker is usually not a sign of, of, of overall better health, right? Mm -hmm. So in fact, I'll tell you this much right now, okay? And I know you guys read that book. One of the greatest predictors of all-cause mortality is weakness. Yeah. It's actually better. Grip, grip strength. It's better than, uh, than uh, whether or not someone's on a plant-based diet or not. And also consider this, when they do those studies, or write these books, they're comparing a whole natural food, plant-based diet to the typical American diet that includes meat. Um, so, you know, oh, these, these people eat meat and they're unhealthy. Well, it's not necessarily the meat, it's the buns that come with the burgers right. and, the fries and fries and everything else. And, and all these excess calories. Um, so, and I'll tell you what, you know, if you control your macros and calories, I would challenge you to include some meat with in control calories and macros and, and make sure it's whole and natural. And I would bet that you probably would feel better. Um, you, you probably, now not everybody, there's going to be exceptions to this rule, but I would bet you're better. So the fact that you're losing strength tells me that there's something that's lacking. We're guessing that's protein. I mean, it's and almost calories, obvious. It's, pro it's almost yeah. obvious it's protein. Yeah. I mean, if, if you went for, if she's barely hitting 50 or 60, I mean, this is a it's classic example low. of one of the easiest things that I would help clients. I would, it was very common for me to get a female client that was, under consuming uh, protein on a regular basis and just simply getting her protein up to 90 plus a, a day instantly she would feel the response yeah. in the gym that try, means, try this have have some grass-fed uh beef once right give yourself a serving of grass-fed beef and then see how you feel the day after and if you feel better the day after uh, there's there's a good sign that that's that's probably something that you need, and usually that's what happens. Somebody will throw in. I've had clients like you, and I'll have them eat. Okay, let's eat uh, uh you know a grass fed patty or steak tonight, and then let's see how you feel tomorrow. And it's like, oh my god, I feel stronger already. Um, and I'm like, okay, this is something that we might need to include into your diet. Yeah, something I should also add is I'm breastfeeding, so I'm nursing a nine month old. And so I kind of feel sometimes too that he takes a lot out of me. Of so I wonder if the whole nursing 
while powerlifting training and everything is also contributing to the energy levels. Um, yeah, actually, that's a great, that's a good point. So you notice but the strength. also why you would need more protein, right. yeah, more and, calories. Yes. Too. Yeah, you, you notice the strength losses when you started breastfeeding or were you already breastfeeding when you went plant-based? I was already breastfeeding when I went plant-based, but as soon as I went plant, plant-based, plant the strength went down. Okay, so it's probably due to the diet then, I would say. It's probably not due to, to the breastfeeding. And by the way, if, if you're... If, you, if there's a nutrient that you're lacking because you've eliminated one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet, which is, and this is a fact, okay, um, if you could only pick one food and survive, now this is not ideal, but if you only had to pick one food and survive off of it, it would be meat. It wouldn't. There's no single plant uh, that can do that because, because meat is very nutrient-dense. So if you're lacking a nutrient, even before you get to nutrient deficiency where there's like, you know, like big outward signs, if you're lacking a nutrient and it's not optimal, it could be you know something that you pass on even through your breast milk. So pay attention to that. I would throw in a little bit of meat, test it out. Don't throw five different types of meat at yourself at once. That's I would right. leave dairy last because dairy tends to be the one that people have the highest intolerance to. So throw in something. You know, it could be anything. I would, I would personally, I would choose either eggs or grass-fed beef. See how you feel. If you feel great from it. Awesome. Um, and then start including those types of things and make sure you hit those protein requirements or those protein numbers uh, that tend to be optimal for strength. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the show. Listen to you guys all the time. And thanks to Adam. I'm here in Iowa uh, outside walking my dog barefoot. Now yeah. the neighbors. That's my girl. Awesome. That's, my, that's my girl. Awesome. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, this is why I fucking hate the diet book fucking world yeah, right here. It is, and they do such a good job. It's of, so convincing. Too. It is. Yeah. I mean, read, read, you know, uh, Paul's carnivore book, read Rob's paleo, but I mean, you can cherry pick studies to put them all together to make the case that this way of eating is the most ideal. But the reality is there's such an individual variance to every single person. And mm-hmm. if you're not doing it for moral reasons, right, which I know you asked, one of you asked yeah, that, was Justin asked that right that away. Out. And she said, no, they did it because of this book. That t- for health. Yeah, for mm-hmm. health. And then you notice strength go down. Well, it's which not a health- big indicator of health. Yeah. It's, it's and how your strength. I is. mean, we didn't ask her weight. I'm assuming she weighs more than 100 pounds. And so her eating 50 grams or less of protein, right? I mean, right away, I guarantee you, she bumps that to 90 grams plus. Oh, she'll feel that. She'll feel that. Yeah. She'll feel it in the gym, right? Yeah, away. and that's the problem is people switch to a diet and they don't control all the factors and they're like, oh my gosh, I feel uh, better. And it's like, you're eating less. <laughs> you were overeating before or you're not eating processed food. Yeah. That's probably what the issue was. But Yeah, you got to tease all that out. Yeah, and you got to be careful. I mean, uh, nutrient deficiencies are way higher in in vegans than they are in people who eat an omnivore diet. By the way, I'm comparing healthy to healthy. So I'm not comparing standard American crappy diet to plant-based. Healthy to healthy, more variety versus less variety. You're going to have more nutrient deficiencies. It's a fact. It's proven. Uh, This is not even uh, a debate. So... Um, and I've worked with so many, I've had so many female clients like this. It's like, oh, I don't know why I feel this way. I eat plant-based. We'll throw in a little red meat. Their hair stops falling out or their menstrual cycle comes back. And it's like, okay, like you were yeah. not healthy. Yeah. yeah. And it's not to say there's not outliers who, who benefit from that, but also too, like it's so difficult to get all those nutrients just with that specific diet itself. Yeah. No, you, you, you could not go plant-based no. if it weren't for modern supermarkets. That's it. It's it. You would die. You, there's no, there, there's no such thing as plant-based Hunter I love though that she's she's so consistent. She's a consistent. And she's a trainer, so she knows yeah. what she's doing. So she could see this, right? Yeah. If you're somebody who does something is off, right? If you don't train consistently, you don't you miss this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you miss the signal that hey, maybe this isn't perfect right. for me. Because then they see all these other benefits. Like yeah, skin's clearing up. Right, better sleep. You know, but then yeah, you there's know, some they good. Realize, right, yeah, yeah, these other big and factors. and that's why too. I wouldn't completely abandon the diet. I wouldn't right. say oh stop. That, that could still be the the main thing. But then just throw it in. Even be temporary you know you go through this and then and then you come back to or just, more, or just slowly introduce diet. like you know we are all i mean i don't care what you pick well i mean pick eggs pick grass-fed beef pick fish pick chick, pick one and introduce it yeah. just to just to increase the protein intake and whatever nutrients that you could get from that that you might not have been getting from plants see how you feel mm-hmm. and then either okay just make that the one meat that you introduce and keep in there or start to slowly introduce the mm-hmm. other ones and see how you feel too Our next caller is Andrew from Texas. What's up, Andrew? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Um, 
I am brand new uh, to weightlifting. I think my girlfriend, not so subtly, uh, introduced me to y'all two months ago. Uh, <laughs> and so in the first month, good girl. I spent my time just uh, working on owning the movement, as you talk about stability and flexibility, so I could do compound lifts. And then about a month ago, I started uh, Max Aesthetic. I'm absolutely loving it. But one thing I've noticed is I've gone from about six to seven hours of sleep a night to about eight to nine hours. And I'm also uh, now taking like a 20 minute nap at least once a day. And I wanted to know if this is probably just an adjustment period because my body's taking on, you know, this extra stress and working out. Or if you guys see this long term, is this what happens with sure. uh, with weightlifters? Yeah. So I have two questions for you. Uh, first of all, sleeping eight to nine, eight hours a night is 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 usually better than six to seven for most people. Mm -hmm. But you're also taking a nap, so I need to ask you two other two questions. Number one, are you doing this because you you're tired? Are you finding that you're more fatigued? And then number two, are you noticing consistent strength gains in Maps Aesthetic? Oh yeah. Uh, so to answer the second question first, absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm putting on, you know, I'm, I'm adding m more weight to my lifts. It seems like every time I go out, those, uh, those newbie gains you talk about have been great. Um, it's really just, I, I feel like my body's been exhausted. And so, I mean, I'm going, I feel like I, uh, I lay down and I fall asleep like that. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's just something I'm not used to. Um, like I said, I went from pretty much not working out at all to, to now doing maps aesthetic and I'm, I'm like eight weeks into, I guess, weightlifting now. And so I feel like it's just my body adjusting to the extra stress and movement. What, what's, uh, what's your caffeine intake look like? Mm -hmm. Uh, I pretty much just take pre-workout, um, right before my lift and that's it. Okay. Now, now before when you were sleeping six to seven hours a night, did you feel like you needed more or did you feel like you were fine? Uh, I think I needed more. Um, I just think I, I just, literally wasn't sleeping as much before probably because I had more of a sedentary lifestyle. Okay. And now, now that I'm reading you guys as nutrition guide and I'm going, I'm listening to your podcast a lot more. I'm, I'm starting to take like walks in uh, like every hour at work and stuff like that. So okay. I just feel like I'm moving more. Um, and I'm also, I'm also now in a calorie deficit if that contributes. Oh, at all. Okay. Okay. Well, well okay. that's contributing. Yeah. yeah. And well, so could the pre-workout too. Yeah. yeah well, definitely. so I, so here's the thing. If you weren't getting stronger, I would say it's probably too much. I'd have you back off, but there's a couple things you said that makes me think that your body needs the rest and it's good for you. One is you're getting stronger, right? So mm -hmm. if you're getting stronger, you're, you're usually not overtraining. In fact, I'd say you're probably not overtraining if you're noticing that you're consistent, especially the way you put it, where at least, you know, every time you work out, you seem to be lifting more weight. So that's a good thing. And then the other thing is that you said before you slept less, but you felt like you needed more. You just couldn't get better sleep. Studies show that when people work out, especially when they do resistance training, they get better, deeper, uh, you know, st types of sleep. So the, the sleep is more recuperative, and the body just seems to, you know, be able to sleep better. So this doesn't sound like a bad thing. Now, if your strength stalls, or you notice you're weaker, or you notice that you sleep eight hours, you take a little nap, and you're still super exhausted, I would say bring the scale, scale the volume down by about a third mm. um, to see. And, and and you know, that might even still be the case. MAPS aesthetic is still a lot of volume for a first-time workout. I mean, I would have had you start with MAPS anabolic and then maybe eventually move you to MAPS aesthetic. But the fact that you're getting stronger every single time, I think this is pro you're probably okay. I would also investigate more of the caffeine intake. Mm -hmm. So if, he, if he, he just said he's new to lifting, so I'm assuming you weren't taking a pre-workout six months ago. So, Correct. Okay. And now, were you a coffee drinker before at all? Nope. Okay. Yeah. So you take a guy, okay, who's yeah. never had yeah. caffeine, probably on some 200 plus right. milligrams of caffeine. That's a lot of caffeine in those yes. drinks. Yes. And a lot of times, with, uh, when you, especially that much caffeine and somebody who's not used to always taking it, you can have this, uh, you know, tons of energy from it and then a hard crash come from it right. afterwards. So I would actually uh, recommend like either one theanine, which you are a big advocate of, of taking that with his pre-workout. So a theanine to kind of keep a more even kill uh, and, or maybe even replacing the pre-workout with something more like red juice or something like that, or cordyceps or something along mm -hmm. those lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you could try, you, you could definitely mess with those yeah. uh, two things, but I mean, the fact that you're getting stronger as consistently as you are, yeah. 
That's a good sign. That's the best sign. And I can't think of a more objective, uh, positive yeah. sign that it's working. And I actually went through, like, <clears throat> I go through spells of this too, and I forget that I'm uh, in, in a deficit and I'm actually lowering my calorie intake and wondering why, you know, towards the end of the night, like, I'm getting really tired and I, after my workouts, especially. And that was definitely one of those things, that, a factor in that whole equation that, uh, you, you know, is something that has repeated itself from showed itself for me. But definitely the, the caffeine thing is a real thing especially if you're not used to it like there is an inevitable crash especially with those types of of caffeine products i would also so what uh can we get your your weight how much do you weigh right now and then what what the calorie intake looks like yeah so i'm 511 i weigh 200 pounds and i'm getting like 1800 to 1900 calories okay yeah and that's a cut you, you, from Correct. what you were at before okay you you I mean you you might you you're probably okay um it's I mean, a if low. you're on a cut and you're getting stronger though that's a really good yeah. that's the strength part is what what tells me you're doing okay if you're Once if you're he's got the newbie game yeah, on top a, of that yeah so, but you're not like, even you're not going to might not always but be the case. you could take a newbie and you could overtrain them they're not going to get stronger they're right. going to be sore they're going to feel terrible so the fact that you're getting strong now if you stop getting stronger or you start going backwards i would scale the volume down cuz it might be too much or bump the calories Okay. Hey, yeah. thanks, guys. I appreciate all that you do. No problem. Thank you, Thank Andrew. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm a little torn, right? MAPS Aesthetic is a great workout program, but it's it's probably not the one that I would start with. Right. It's a lot I'm of new. volume right out of the shoes. Yeah, I would go MAPS Anabolic. MAPS Anabolic is, is a great way to start. I mean, MAPS Anabolic is a great program, period. You can go back to it even if you're advanced and get great gains. You're just biased because you're on it. Yeah. No, <laughs> no I mean... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm on the cover. <laughs> no, I agree. We all agree that. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. uh, it should be addressed, right? Because uh, obviously, we always have new audience. Um, the the way the programs we in, uh, originally wrote maps, anabolic performance, and aesthetic to be followed in that order. Mm -hmm. So even though there's exceptions to the rule, and yes, you can some people can start in different places. The the thought process when we thought about the amount of volume that is in each one of those programs and the things that we are addressing. With, with each one of those programs, the ideal thing for most people is to go anabolic, performance, and then aesthetic. I, You know, a couple things we didn't get a chance to say, so hopefully Andrew listens to this. I would also uh, have like three days in a row where I give myself a calorie surplus just to see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, it, he might be... 1,800 calories is pretty low for a 200-pound young man that's lifting five to six days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, I'd would, i rather see him somewhere on a cut, like 22 to 2,300 maybe. You know, And again, these are generic numbers. I don't know where his metabolism, his metabolism is currently at, so I'm, I'm just throwing stuff out there. But that's a pretty low calorie intake, and that could be a big part of it. And then, again, the caffeine. He wasn't taking caffeine in it at all, and also yeah. you take two well, that's milligrams? what I'm wondering if he, he started his workouts like he's never worked out before, and then and then added the pre workout like doesn't really drink caffeine like both of those right Shit. out of the shoots. It's like it would have been interesting to see if he just worked out without any kind of like stimulant. Yeah, I, or like the red juice. That's why I would yeah. push him in the direction of trying that out and seeing how he feels with that, or messing with theanine or cordyceps in there. I just think that maybe that that I'm thinking of the nap right because the sleeping at night that's great. Yeah. If you're getting if you're yeah. getting eight eight nine hours of sleep, nothing I mean, wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's I think it's probably really good for him. His body's wanting to recover. His strength is going up. Like you're saying, the only thing that I would try and figure out or get to the bottom of is the midday nap, and the midday nap could be just we're so low of calories or. I've all of a sudden went from never taking caffeine to taking, you know, 300 milligrams of caffeine, and it's the crash that he's feeling. If he yeah. probably trains it early in the morning, it sounds like, so earlier in the day, takes this huge spike by noon or one, is yeah, feeling tired. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, here's the deal. Um, going, leapfrogging a program doesn't get you there any faster, too. That's something that yeah, I think is important to explain. So uh, yeah. if MAPS anabolic is, is appropriate for you and the progression is anabolic, to performance to aesthetic jumping to aesthetic doesn't mean you get there faster it actually means you get there slower because you started with a program that wasn't the perfect dose or the right dose you know this for is your body this is something that's uh katrina right so you i mean you guys know obviously off air about her situation and just getting back from surgery and stuff like that and she had to reset and i made her start with starter mm. and she's never ran starter before mm -hmm. and it was such a, a mind fuck for her and i kept telling and i'm asking her as she's going she's now in the third week of of 
starter right now. I go, well, what are you seeing? Are you still getting sore? She goes, yeah, I know. I mean, the workouts that when I'm doing them, I feel like they're too easy and mm -hmm. too basic, but I do get sore from it. I said, then why? Why would we go to anabolic yet when you're still seeing totally. these results? And she's so antsy to get there. And I'm like, you're seeing progression right now. Mm -hmm. Totally. There's no reason to do that. Absolutely. Look, if you like our information, you have to head over to mindpumpfree.com. That's where we have all of our free guides, and they're very, very valuable, and they cost nothing, and there's a ton of them there, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Adam at Mind Pump Adam, Justin at Mind Pump Justin, and me at Mind Pump Sal. See, this is the key. He didn't go out and bench every day heavy. He went out and practiced very often, and he benched heavy, I don't know, once a week. Mm -hmm. And so I practiced this, and this is the first time in my life that I was able to bench press over 300 pounds. I was stuck forever at whatever it was. Then I started increasing my bench frequency where I was bench pressing three days a 